Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Corruptional Podcast here on the 10th of April, 2018. Hello. It's Hello. my mommy's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Mommy. Yo, happy birthday, mommy. Mother Dodger. But I guess Mother Dodger is probably a bad choice of words considering. Mother Dodger. <laughs> Mother Dodger's like, yeah, you're, you're already going to be one of them. Mom, Momger. Mom, Momger. Yes. Mm. It sounds not like a, a, I'm not a fan. Sounds like an ogre queen, Momja, or mm. something along those lines. Great. Yes, yes, good. Which could you send Momja over here to deal with the fact that they now think it is appropriate to do my lawn closer and closer to the podcast every single time we do it, Mom despite Jar. being I'll let, late. I'll let Momja know. Good. She'll, she'll show up and set them know. straight. Yeah, for sure. It's like we are late on the show, and they still manage to show up to interfere with it. How is that even fucking possible? I don't cool. understand. If it helps, I can't hear anything. Good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad at least some of the things Mom jars. for this studio seem to work in the way that is intended. Oh, my. Now, you might be wondering who our guest is. One, he's in the studio with me right now. Whoa. And he, he himself can attest to the annoyingness of that damn lawnmower. It's a pretty loud lawnmower. Someone's it's, doing some heavy duty lawning. Yeah, there's some lawning going on over here. And he is, in fact, somebody that you may have heard of before because he's been on my stream before. He co streamed Warhammer Total War 2 with me, in fact, a while ago. Watching you play some Skaven? Yep, play yeah. some Skaven, roast some Skaven, set all my own Skaven on fire the way it should be. Mm. That was good fun. I enjoyed, enjoyed, enjoyed watching you uh, build your empire up and almost lose it in almost every battle. Yeah. Almost, almost. every? Almost, almost. Almost. It's a plan. As long as there's a lot of dead Skaven, I mean, it's yeah. the actual plan. There was anyway. a lot of dead Skaven. I think that the plan worked out quite nice. It's <laughs> Mr. Dogbert, as he likes to be referred to, from Creative Assembly, the makers of the famed Total War series. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having yeah. me. It's an honor. Sort of officially to the show, even though you've been on the stream several times before yeah no it's uh it, it's second time uh down here with you and uh you know one of your dogs still doesn't quite uh <laughs> feel comfortable around me See, the dog <laughs> likes you it just the dog wants is trying to prove that the dog's not scared of you despite the fact that the dog is definitely scared of you well that makes two of us so you know. oh that's the hardest dog. dog situation where you're like I know that the reason you're constantly barking at me is because you're like nervous. <laughs> it's like, how do I make you less nervous? What do I need to do? I need to just leave? Is that the only option? I've tried. Every time I've gone for a Dr. Pepper, he's like cornering me. You know, I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to pet you. I'm hoping everything's going to be fine here. Yeah, it'll be one bark and then you'll pet him <laughs> and it'll be fine. But then he'll bark again and say, hey, no, it's fine. You know, I, I, I'm still not scared of you. I'm still not scared of you. I just want to remind you of that as you walk away with your can. I'm still not scared of you. Honest. Um, there's a dog that comes into this office often. And if you manage to, like, enter his space and he doesn't bark, you're like, oh, shit. Hell yeah, we did it. He's not barking at me. But then if you do one thing that he thinks is weird, it's it's over. It's over. It's over. Like... Like even bending down to pet him sometimes is like, whoa, whoa, whoa! We were, we were just fine when you were standing. Why did yeah. you have to bend down? <laughs> it's like I was, I was. You yeah, know what? You're right, buddy. I'm gonna just leave. Of the arrangement here, but yes, that, that that was that. That's how that has been working out for the last couple of days. For someone who picked his gaming name as Dog, but I really should be better with dogs. You don't have any really dogs. <laughs> yes. No, never. I've always had cats. Before that. Uh, what is it that you used to do? Because some people do in chat recognize you from things that were not to do with Total War. You were a pro gamer, I believe, at one point. Yeah, back in the dark age before Twitch came and saved us all. Um, I used to play for Team Dignitas, uh, playing Battlefield, World in Conflict, Crisis. Basically, the old days before, before Twitch came around and changed everything. Um, 
you you would have the gamers who would just play an esports. Uh, they would play a particular one: StarCraft, uh, Counter Strike, uh, Quake. Like when I was playing, Quake was like the big one. Um, mm. But then there was other groups of people who would be like mercenaries for hire. Like me and uh, Zakibus, uh, you know quite well. We just played any game that was had some prize money at tournaments, and we just go yeah. there and rinse people. Yeah, you just great. You're just not good at it. <laughs> I hired these guys to destroy Epic Meal Time. There was a promo deal that was going on for a game that never ended up coming out. It was Univ. Uh, what was it? What was the name of the bloody Empire? game? Oh, no, it's from the guys who made Empire War, and they were the guys who originally had done it Command and Conquer. Yeah, it wasn't Universe at War. No, that was the it one was that did. Uh, Nations uh, at War. Nations at War. No, endless. End, end, end of Nations. End of Nations. Yeah. That's the name of the game. Yeah, we got there eventually. It was supposed to be a big sort of MMO strategy game where you each controlled like a small number of units mm. and then you had a big big battle. And as part of their early advertising thing and early influencer stuff, they didn't quite get the influencer thing. They were like, well, okay, so we can get you in, I guess. You know you, you know strategy games. And then we're going to get the guys from Epic Mealtime to play an RTS, a competitive RTS, because they'll surely be good at that, right? Wait, and so, wait, I'm... S so you were like, you know what would make me feel good is if I stomped them even harder? Well... That's what happened. what happened. And then they you were get... like, I'm going to get my buddies who are going to also be good at this game. I assumed, you know, bear in mind, this was a three on three situation <laughs> that, that, that they would bring ringers. I mean, what, you know, your epic meal time, you're really going to send in just the guys that barely play yeah. video games. I pl I, yeah. No. no. <laughs> In fact, we were that quite specifically deal, right? told it was a good idea to bring a couple of people who might be familiar with games. No, not not no, just no, no, no. like pro gamers, but actually familiar with video games. There, there seemed to be a problem with them not really being very good at them. There's I evidence the of that on my channel. When it comes to a brand deal, though... I get the feeling that saying, look, I know you're paying for us Epic Meal Time to play this game, but what if we got these guys representing the Epic Meal Time team to well, play? No, because they brought the main guy and they can bring the second guy, and no one cares about the rest of Epic Meal Time. So you can get a ringer or two and then no problem. I don't see the issue. All I know is I won and was paid. We brought the main guy. It was a slaughter. It was. <laughs> it was embarrassed for them, it was an, you know, It was embarrassing slaughter, yeah. It was pretty great. But I'm sure they had a good meal afterwards. And that's I'm sure nice. they did, yeah. I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that very much. Yeah, so other than that, I ended up working for Team Dignitas afterwards. Yeah. So when I, I, I literally started as a teenager playing, going to land cafes and IGUK, like loads of different things that don't exist anymore but don't need to because of things like Twitch and, and so on. Played Vody. Um one of the most important guys probably of my life uh, obviously you know brought me up as a kid and gave me the skill set to work as a project manager for the team for a bit and then eventually joined Crave Assembly who you know I grew up playing all their games so it's and I'm a history nerd massive history nerd nice. and now I'm here <laughs> yep started from the bottom and now fell upwards is what I usually fell say fell upwards yeah I like that <laughs> I've got like two GSCSEs. I like it's, that term. Yeah, that's a good one. It was because really, let's be honest, like in the early days of esports, it was more about navigating troubled waters and not running into something than really anything that you did. It's like you, you weren't necessarily successful in esports. It's just you survived esports. It was weird because when you saw the um, the big games coming in, when StarCraft, for example, got really big, you would have these guys who'd been working in the industry and maybe even retired several times like Red Eye and kept coming back. And you'd be in the pub with these people at like an iSeries event, for example, um, and, and you'd see them kind of, you know, establishing themselves, you know, making a full-time job. And then StarCraft got big and other games started getting big. And then these kids who never had to experience kind of... Uh, the terrifying nature of the fact that there's no money in esports all of a sudden getting like 
salary straight off the bat, you know, kind of then worshipped as uh, superstars. And yeah, it was, it was, and I spent most of my time looking after those kind of kids. It was, uh, and then, and then seeing it kind of like fade out for some of them, it's really hard to watch sometimes. Yeah. And as we're seeing lately, a lot of people don't really seem to know how to navigate esports these days, even with more regulation. How many people are we going to see fined and suspended from Overwatch League by the time this damn thing is over and done with? It's happening on a weekly basis. I was at PAX East recently and they did the 20 years um, uh, StarCraft and they had a um, guy up from the NBA. Uh, I can't remember his name. And he, he was saying it's a lot easier to do kind of NBA to, uh, to an extent because you go and train. There's no cameras where you're training. You yes, go, you go yeah. do all that. You do your training, you do your laddering on StarCraft. And then after that, you, you then stream for like six hours to make your income. I mean, the, the amount of people that, you know, are in situations of like a lot of pressure and they might say the wrong things in a lot of cases and they end up they're gone. That can be it. If you do one thing on live stream, like that could be the oh, obviously yeah. It, yeah. none of it's not saying loads of things that people have done not defensible but sometimes it's just embarrassing accidental things and they're never seen again yeah it, it, there's no question about that it, it's harder to control yourself in a situation like that there's no defending the actions of the you know the people involved but instead of having a media manager and a coach and being put in an environment where that wouldn't happen you're sitting there, like you said, basically streaming your training. Yeah, you know? yeah. I was. I used to watch Heroes on Earth. It was like one of the games I, I absolutely loved at one point. Um, and there was a, a caster on that, and he just left his webcam once, uh, one time, scratched in the wrong area and sniffed, and he was gone. Literally, like yeah. you just didn't see him on the face of the earth for for such a long time. Yeah, it's it's, it's bonkers. It's <laughs> Heroes on Earth for first. Uh, Dota clone that had uh, team chat, like oh. team voice. Oh my god! <laughs> Heroes of New Earth, a very friendly community. <laughs> Jesus Christ, those were the days. Welcome to the Cooperative Podcast. We do occasionally talk about video games. Let's do just that. A couple of people have been to PAX, I believe. I'm sitting next to one of them. <clears throat> and Jesse, did you head over to PAX East? I mean, I did. Yeah, I didn't play a single video game. I'm sorry, not a single what? one. Okay, yeah, what, what did you shill then? Because I believe you were there shilling something. I shilled my own video game. Indeed, well, but I didn't you... play a single one. Well, tell um, us about your own video game then. This is going to be a short show. Monster Prom is a competitive dating sim, in which you and up to three of your friends can play to compete for the hearts of many monsters at Monster High. It is delightful and fun and silly, and it comes out April 27th. Bink. Uh, but I didn't play other games. I didn't play any games at PAX, but I played, like, other games. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll so I that. played the game Extinction. Right. Which, uh, how to describe this one? It is, like, a combination of Attack on Titan and, uh, I don't know. Um, is this it, on it, PlayStation 4? It's on PS4, it's on PC, and I think Xbox as well. Is this and, out? Um, the basic gist is you are a little tiny dude, and you um, battle giant-ass ogre slash troll slash whatever the hell they're, they're called, Raveni in the game. They're like big-ass monster. Okay. And you cut off their limbs, and you climb them, and you decapitate them, and it's like very fast-paced, very fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Here's my problem. I don't know how it's 50 like it's $60 on Steam. I cannot in my life justify this game being $60. Like I just it for what it is, the like the cutscenes are like um sort of that like animatic, like every few frames something moves, cutscenes. The dialogue in game is fine, but it sort of like pops up and does that. Like it, it is all the hallmarks of an indie title, right? And would be an awesome thirty. If this was thirty bucks. I'd be like, pick this shit up. This shit is amazing. But it's sixty, but it's sixty. Yeah, and it's, it's like, like Iron Galaxy. I was I was wondering who made it. I was curious, and it's 
apparently dev by Iron Galaxy, who have worked on things like Dive Kick, which, to be fair, at the time was also overpriced for what it was, although not to that extent. And then, of course, they did bits on Killer Instinct. I had no idea they were even working on another game, let alone this thing. And they apparently worked with Modus Games as well to make it. Mm. It's 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 like it has the same idea of Shadow Colossus, like and and Attack on Titan, because you're defending towns, right? Okay. So you're defending towns, and your objectives are save people and defeat these monsters. And yeah. so when you save people or you attack certain monsters, you build up this charge. And then once the charge is full, you can decapitate the big monsters. But once you decapitate, uh, what the fuck word did I say? Once you decapitate one of them, decapitate. Once you yep, decapitate, yep. once you decapitate one of them, uh, you lose your charge and you have to like rebuild it up again. Um, the different ogre creatures have like uh, armors that you have to break and things like that. And there's different strategies. And sometimes they send two or three at the same time. And eventually, as time goes on, they start to get weapons, and they start to get all sorts of different things they can use to mess with you. And the entire level is, like, destructible. So as the monsters move through, they can destroy walls and buildings, and they can stomp on people. You can be crushed, and it's it's ridiculous that you get, like, one shot a lot if you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and it's fun. I had a lot of fun. The combat's super fast-paced. Yeah, I was like, looks- this is... Nice. Good. Yeah, it's it's fun but i i don't know where the price tag comes in i don't know where the price tag comes in because it's just like it looks like i if this was like a stellar indie title that was like 29.99 it'd be like pick the shit up you'll love it 60 bucks that is crazy to me so wait for on sale one yeah i'd say wait honestly what so what is it that why why can't it be 60 bucks like is is it just a lack of content are you just doing the same thing <coughs> over and over again is it um, just the general level of polish that's not you know what is it that's stopping you from saying full price is okay here so uh what when you play there is the um main story right which is uh eight chapters i think i don't remember how much seven or eight chapters and each chapter has three or four missions in it and um that's the main game and then you can go back through and replay those and do like bonus objective things in them where it feels very much like if you're playing a mobile game where it's like in order to get three stars you have to do these things so you have to play right. a level a few okay. times if you screw up it's a little um, bit of a cheap way of getting you to play things multiple times right right and then they have three bonus ver- like level stages um I'm trying to think of what the right word is like modes they have three bonus modes uh one is where you're competing against your friend for scores one is where it's fight as many monsters as you can and you only get one life and if you die you're done and one is um i don't remember what the third one is but uh i tried extinction mode and boy was i terrible at it but uh <laughs> the the main crux of the game though is like your running around, getting points by saving people or killing monsters, buffing your character, adding new abilities, um, adding things that can like change the way you play the game. But the actual gameplay, the way it looks, the way it plays, there's just something about it that while fun, um, a lot of the levels, especially the first, uh, I did all of chapter one and some of chapter two, they all start to like look the same after a while there's there's something about it where even though the levels are auto like they're they're randomly generated so the area you you start in the um way the town is built the walls and defenses the town has it's and and the location of where the crystals are where you can save people is all um auto generated it starts to feel like okay i i i guess because a tower always needs to look like a tower. Like if you're going to climb the tower to like look out and see the world and see where points are, because that's sort of how you um, uh, survey the surroundings. so You can figure out where to go next. Uh, They start to look the same. Um, They make changes like, well, this tower is covered in spiky vines, so you can't climb this one, which is fine. But everything starts, it has that like indie vibe to it where there were enough assets or enough time or enough money Mm, to make things look more different. Um, There is the fact that, uh, the 
interactions with the giants, there's a lot. Uh, instead of making them look different um, and having different varieties, they all relatively look like giant orcs from WoW. Pretty and much, with yeah. All the footage we've been watching has been green orc, green orc with helmet, green orc, very upset looking green orc. And it's like, surely at least changing the yeah. color palette around a bit wouldn't be that hard, right? That's yeah, it. it's there's just it's one of those things where it has all the hallmarks of like a great indie title, but I don't know that it has the amount of gameplay and value added stuff of a sixty dollar triple A game. Like yeah. again, the 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 there, I've only seen one cutscene and it wasn't really a cutscene. Um, it was like you know just still images. I the dialogue in game is um very much just like a little window pops up and like voiceover like there's there's limited story pushing it forward i don't know it just it's it's gameplay wise it's fun and the stuff i've done has been fun i just i just don't know that i can honestly say like hey spend 60 bucks 60, on this like yeah. I, I just yeah well i mean i think there's this, you know there's a solution to that which is don't w wait see where it goes if it ends up being 30 dollars six months down the line with a bunch of extra content in it what i've yeah. seen of it looks pretty good i also think i will probably get to a situation where i get bored of that loop which is the same as what happened with the actual attack on titan games uh but there's potential there like you said it's but it does cool. look a, it's a bit pr pricey for what it is when you like cut one of the one of the fun parts of the game is that you can just dismember the giants. And so if you cut off one of their arms, uh, it's like this crazy bloody stump and he's trying to use his other arm to swing at you and you can jump on his back and mess with them. You can cut off their legs and they fall over. But over time, they regenerate their limbs so they get back up and keep moving. And the actual like combat in the game is super simple. It's just like different combinations of X, but oh. it's like hold X like and then that. X is X or X, X, hold X, X, like it's just different versions of X, and like you're suddenly it's flying like you, around the stage, and you look you have amazing. More than that, <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. It's super simple, and you're just like, oh, I am a fucking god, and you're. But it, it, you know, after a while, that and early enjoyment, where you're like, oh, this is amazing, slowly starts it to fade off pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. Well, we'll we'll see where it goes. Like six months down the line, you know, there's. So we've disagreed on the subject before as to whether or not we think, hey, you only get one launch anymore. And I'm I'm of now of kind of the opinion that you don't. And you know, and that six months down the line, this gets a big content update. It's $30 and suddenly people are like, or some streamer gets a hold of it and says, oh, it's fucking great now. Let's go check it out. Uh, but it's, it is a shame that it's obviously come out with a really cheeky price tag attached to it. And that might very well engender some pretty bad faith from a lot of people going forward in this thing yeah it's a shame oh well, never mind but it's a i didn't even know this was coming out i had no idea this slipped right through the cracks yeah i had no idea either and then i saw it was like what the shit is what this is that? <laughs> yeah yeah because it does look intriguing for sure yeah, yeah it's it's not a bad game it's fun it's just a you know it's like a really, really good indie game. Yeah. But I don't know why it has a AAA price tag. It's like no, ludicrously, right. like ludicrously expensive. Uncertain. Yeah, that's a, a that's definitely an uncertain one. Uh, Dogbert, you Hi. were working quite a lot at PAX. Yes. So, um, but did you get a chance to see anything cool while you were there? Uh, I had a quick look around. I was quite surprised at how few. Um, uh, PC and AAA games, so it's a lot heavily on the indie side. Um, it's my first PAX East. I've done PAX ah. West before, Gamescom, yeah. like stuff like that. I think it's one of the few shows I haven't done. It, it's really cool. I, I mean, uh, uh, Detroit, that looked really cool. Is it Detroit? It is Detroit becoming yeah, human. Yeah. yeah, that looked really, really cool. I want to get my hands on that. Um, but I, 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 ha I have this problem where if there's a large queue on a game, I ain't, I ain't waiting. I, I want to no. play it when I get home, you know? Yeah. Um, but there, there was a lot of cool interest. Um, they had uh, Deliverance, King Come, still haven't played that. They were there in force as well. Um, really, really want to get my hands on that, actually. It, that's that's a game that we were talking about last week. Uh, I think we had Mathis on, who has played a ton of it, and he has run into so many problems and bugs with Deliverance 
that is like your tolerance level needs to be very high and you need to be modding this game to make sure you can save wherever you want because if you don't even if you love the idea of oh you can only save in a bed and all that kind of thing which is neat it may still break and probably will at some point and you'll lose a bunch of progress so that seems to be the consensus on it at the moment what's there is good but they've got to fix it in a major way it's impressive what they managed to put together, though. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, have, having a game of that scale again, and obviously the kind of historical side of it as well, going to the, the small kingdoms in like in Central Europe, you know, have so much fun with that and so much role playing uh, possibility. At the end of the day, I just want to kind of walk around as a knight anyway, and just I'm I'm, I'm waiting for like Mountain Bay Blade, the new, the new one. Oh like, god, oh. where is Mountain Blade <laughs> two? Why is it not here yet? I think I heard yesterday that it's going to have upgradable castles which is great, you know, I want to be able to forge my own faction and upgrade all my shit and fight in sieges that don't suck. Now, the question is whether or not they'll have those. I, from everything I've seen, a guy, um, a few guys in my work, like, they're obsessed about it, as you would expect from a, a studio that makes historical games. Uh, and, um, yeah, I, I, honestly, I can't wait. The amount of times, but I managed to pick, uh, like, lose a battle against some really big, king's army or whatever yeah. uh you know you kind of you, you you beat the first wave the second wave comes on by the third wave eventually get taken out and then all of a sudden you get killed by bandits anyway like later on when you've got like a tiny army and you're running away on the campaign map man i love that game i can't <laughs> wait for the the sequel it's so much where is it that's, that's what i want to know I've been it'll so be long. done when it's done like that's They've been oh god I can't remember when they announced Bannerlord it was a long time ago the there was a trailer nine months ago from E3 yeah uh, there's gameplay trailers over the last few years it's like is it even worth showing any of them because the state that the game is currently in is probably a lot different to this it's one of those mm. games that doesn't have to look amazing. It's all about what you can do and the depth of it. And yeah. it is amazing for that. And very few games ever give you that feeling of being an individual in a massive epic battle um, quite on the way that they've done it. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I hope it doesn't suck. <laughs> I really do, because those games are few and far between. Mm. Think of the mods for this. like the They'll be great. Oh, the... the, the you know, Game of Thrones one would be absolutely amazing. I mean, yeah. every time I'm watching Game of Thrones, I'm just like, oh yeah, I do this in Man Blade all the time. It's basically Lord, yeah. <laughs> no, no relation to the Banner Saga for those asking. Absolutely nothing to do with that. <laughs> no. No, afraid not, afraid not. And okay. uh, being on a, a, a siege as well and just sitting there and killing them as they come up over... Just whacking them with a hammer yeah, over and over and over basically again. Basically Gimli from like uh, Two Towers just sitting there just like, yeah, That's one, it counts two, as one. three. Uh, it's, it's good. And there's just a clank if they've got a nice like bucket-like helmet. You just clang them on the head. I love it. We you talking about the last game, you feel like an absolute badass you take down a giant. I just feel an absolute badass where I kill loads of peasants when I'm surrounded in armor and have troops. I feel like God then. Man, I, corrupted by power so easily. <laughs> absolute power corrupts absolutely. You will not get that quickly in Deliverance, I warn you of this. You you don't start off as a badass knight in that game. You have to learn to be a knight, and the game's got to punish you all the way up until you've managed to do that. You don't even know how to use a sword properly. It's... Uh, it's pretty interesting, to say the least. So did anyone actually see anything at PAX East that went there? I'm aware that people went to work, but even something... They announced walked... Final Fantasy XIV bunny outfits for boys. Are you kidding me? I'm very excited. <laughs> I can't wait to put a bunny outfit on uh, my, my, sweet, my sweet white mage. Why do we even have these expos? It's like... <laughs> Well, yeah, we went to these expos. What, what did we do? That was do? the most important information. I mean, <clears throat> no I, did, I, I, I did spend an hour playing SNK Heroines Tag Team Frenzy. I mean, if that matters. You, you could, yes, it does. You, were, you yes. went to an expo and you played a video game. Tell us about it. Um, if I had said that, TB would have been like, no, that doesn't matter next. <laughs> well, the thing is, I know what he's talking about is a game. Whereas if it came out of your mouth, I couldn't be certain <clears> about that. 
Um, it's a game where you play as girls throughout the SNK universe, and it has ultra easy controls, and you watch them bludgeon each other to death. Okay. And it's a tag team game, so you can switch in and out, and uh, it's ridiculous. SNK <laughs> heroines tag There's, team frenzy. As There's you a... play through the stage, little orbies appear, and when you punch them, like ducks fly around and like ducks? candy falls from the sky what? and oh man it is sounds like a waifu fighter well, yeah. the, it the is a waifu says, fighter to the nth degree it the is says the future is now so we're about to find out if that is correct it is crazy a dreadful plan was executed and the fighters were knocked unconscious <laughs> alert uh, then anime a shocking mm -hmm. new battle begins. Oh my god, you're actually reading from the... Oh wow. Yeah, this is a, from the trailer. Weird video. Because half is a of them won't fit on the screen. SNK's heroines will have a big battle in a mystery mansion. Why? Who made this video? <laughs> SNK did. And there god. it is. There is. There's the actual game. Which is what I thought it would be when I heard him talking yep. about it yep can i just that point out i just want to point I, out cowgirl just yes go back to the end of this video i assume we're all watching the same one go back to the end of the video well we are when we'll uh about like a minute i don't know 34 when all the girls start like doing like power up abilities and like shit explodes off of them in the background that looks like confetti it's, and stuff yep that is just in the game you'll be fighting and jumping and like <laughs> shit is ex there's confetti and like uh, stuffed animals and shit flying everywhere it is but onkers it Who is will be the bell of the brawl the us. bell of the brawl why, Fuck, what why is she a cow is she i also rumble rose SNK I, heroines. I don't understand yep i, I i'm none the wiser after watching that only that that is a waifu fighter all right i also want to point out waifu <clears throat> If you go to the uh, Nice NIS America store, the collector's edition of this game <laughs> is called the Diamond Dream Edition. Of course. And it in it, so you all know the Fatal Fury hat, right? This one, in the collector's edition, you get a hat that says Fatal Cutie. I've already pre ordered the collector's edition. <laughs> I'm going to wear that hat around this office Fatal all Cutie. day, Love every it. day. Fatal cutie. It's happening. Oh my god. And then you'll okay. have a really primo hat collection going on in your office. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, Classy that's one of the things only. I actually did. Well, that's why we go to PAX East. My priorities were, were in tip top shape. Apparently so, yes. Promo it sounds yeah. like our priorities are similar. I can get yeah. behind that. Shilling your own game, that's fine. Then yeah. go I spent I spent I spent a whole weekend promoting a game that is about waifus so and husbandos and, and husbandos lots of husbandos lots oh, of secret husbandos adorable husbandos mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. april 27th i'm very excited to play monster prom are you entering extreme early access because no, there's no early access. Once the game exists, it'll exist. It's crazy. Because now there's extreme early access, it turns out. The what? Uh, according to the Steam page for Radical Heights, which is the boss key battle royale game that got announced and is now coming out tomorrow, it's apparently extreme early access with an X. Big X, tree. What? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what that means. I don't know what the difference between extreme early access What is the name is. of this game? It's called uh, Battle... Oh, uh, God, what is it? Uh, reach something... Uh, what the fuck? Where did it go? I had a name for this thing. Radical Heights. There it is. Yes. Radical Heights. It is a... We're going to talk about this in the news segment. Uh, All right, then I won't talk about it now. Yeah. I just wanted Apparently to look it, it is up. Out, it's actually out right now. But I, I just wanted to read this thing out about extreme early access. Welcome to Radical Heights in a, a free extreme early access battle royale shooter. Is it because yeah. the game is extreme or because it's so say, early it's when extreme? You click, 
when you click on the game, it still just says normal ass early access. I yes. was like, where are all of the fucking Kotaku I think it's extreme because there are, there are BMXs in it. So it's extreme. Yeah. God, we just got played so hard, Jesse. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I thought we were like going to learn feel, something new. Yeah. I feel like I just got goofed on real yeah. hard. By TV. Yeah, I'm not okay with this version of TB. <laughs> yeah, this goofy, this goofy troll like version of TB. TV. Yeah, I don't like it's, this TB. Yeah, that's what it said. It said extreme early access. What if I, you know, I can't tell you, can't tell you that it doesn't. That would be a lie. That's what that I like it this TB. It has a TV. banking system. In it. I don't know what's going on with it. Some weird um, shit going down. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the. We will. We'll keep that for the news because, yeah, the people seem really upset that there's another game in a genre that clearly doesn't have anywhere near enough games in it for the number of players it has. So yeah. we could talk about that a little bit later. Gotcha. That's fine. How dare people keep making games in a genre they would like to make a game in? Yes, and that obviously has a ton of money to be made from that genre. Because mm. people Doesn't hate, make sense. yeah, people hate playing battle royale games. I why don't... is everybody trying to ruin PUBG for me? Yeah, why? There's only there can only I be can't even one. Last time I played that game, blows my mind when people get as upset as they do. It's like there's another game in the genre that I like. How the fuck is that bad? <laughs> Like I said, you've had, you've had this all before. Like Command and Conquer, like back in the day, like there were so many Command and Conquer clones, um, but some of them were some of the most amazing games I, I remember playing. Like, I love Command and Conquer. Give me more Command and Conquer. They can't make enough Command and Conquer for me, so keep making me some more Command and Conquer. Um, and and so many games like took that formula and changed it and did something different, unique of it. And you know, okay, there's not many Command and Conquer counter style games these days, but you know that's the way it is. Game industry evolves and changes, and you know some games just disappear after a while. Yep, some genres mm. go bye bye, and you know RTS kind of being one of those. Do you remember when space games were that? And yeah. then like all of a sudden, like you've got loads back on the market now. Like some of the biggest releases in the last like few years have been space games. Yep, and hopefully like there's. So, sorry. It's like clothes. Is it? Yeah. Space games are like neon fishnets. In Identical. What, what did, the hell did you just say? People wore neon fishnets and then they were like, what the fuck have we been doing? These are awful. And oh, you mean on their bodies? I thought you meant like actually to catch fish. <laughs> And I was People like were catching <laughs> fish with neon and then realized, wow, that's really far too obvious. But then they just had to come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh dear. I'll tell you a genre that it, I was about to say. I'll tell you a genre that's not full, and now I'm trying to think of one. It's like, do I actually know of one? I do know of one. I'll tell you one, and that genre is turn-based mech strategy. <laughs> that genre isn't full at all, especially just if mech games. I think you could have just said mech just games. Mech games in general. Turn-based mech strategy. Yeah. As Nothing says to, I'm going to remove the fun out of being in a mech like having to take a turn. Uh, <laughs> tell that to the people that were playing Battletech 30 years ago on a fucking tabletop. No, yeah, well, that's all they knew. That's all they knew. <laughs> if I'm in a mech, Desperate. I want to like mow down dudes with machine gun. Like, I have never <laughs> agreed with you more. No, you, have, you view mechs in a fundamentally different way to the people that like Mech Warrior. I think mech, mechs are awesome. Being in a mech is cool. Having mechs move around is awesome, but like clicking next turn defeats, I think, the purpose of being like mech v mech combat. I don't know. That's what? just me. I yes, I think it is just you. How how does okay. it affect the? I'm just maybe that's how, why there it's lacking in the genre the because there are it's other a, just me's out there. It's a strategy game, so you do strategic things. How does how does that there being a turn button somehow ruin the fact that it's a mech game where it's mechs fighting other mechs? You know these big fucking lumbering things that don't just die after two seconds. Yeah, but like I don't know, it's just cool. It, <laughs> I don't know. It's just cool. It's just cool when you're like are in the middle of like it's overwhelming and you're in combat and shit's it's like, like Godzilla. Yeah, you don't want to like, play a Godzilla game where you're not just crushing things willy nilly. Turn based Godzilla game coming soon. Turn based Godzilla. No, <laughs> no, get I out of here with these ideas. 
I'd be entirely like, okay with that. The, the, the idea of turn based, at least in my mind, and this is why I think, um, I don't know. I think I like certain turn-based games over others. It's turn-based, and I blame Civilization for this, is like click turn and it's the passage of time. Like turn one means that time has passed rather than like I am moving at you, click turn, and then like, okay, now I'm also moving at you again, right? It's I, I, I don't know. Like I, for some reason, I like the idea of I like... That's, that's the difference. You like strategy games, not tactics games. Yes, you're not sure. much of an expert. I'll accept player. that. I'll accept that. I like Fire Emblem games. I liked uh, yeah, Final yeah. Fantasy Tactics. I like that stuff. Okay. I just those are I don't also know. games in which people move towards each other, then hit the end turn button. I think I think I think I just like the idea of being in a mech over watching mechs fight. I yes. think maybe that's, if I had to hone it down, maybe yes, that's where I'm at. So you want to be a mech warrior and not a mech commander. Yes, I yes. want to, I, I'd rather, someone else can command me through, through an earpiece, but I just want to like blast dudes with like right, well, rocket launchers coming off the top of my, I'm in like the dome. Like, out. So there will, there will be a game that lets you do that. And that's coming out this year, I think. Uh, it's being made by Piranha, who were the guys that made... MechWarrior Online, which was not a bad game for the most part. It was just a game that required you to have lots of money if you wanted to own the best stuff, which was pretty shitty. So a single player game that doesn't have any of that, well, that's a good thing. Right. The single player game that I've been playing is Battletech, which is the turn-based tactics version, whereby you command a lance of up to four mechs, all of which you have to maintain... Make sure they're not falling to pieces. You have pilots that have their own little RPG skill trees. So keeping them mm. alive is important because if they die, then, well, you know, you're missing them. You're trying to take mercenary jobs, desperately trying to keep everything fueled up and eventually, hopefully, scavenge mechs from the battlefield and buy new mechs and mech parts and customize it. That's what Battletech is. Mm. And there's a ton of that in it and i got a chance to play a bunch of that before i left for vegas and it's excellent if that's what you want if you want that slower paced tactics game with mechs right. in it if you don't then no no it's a slow it's definitely a very slow paced game requires you to methodically move requires you to be careful not do stupid shit although you still can throw yourself through the air with jump jets and jump on somebody's head so there is that, and that's a that's a little bit reckless, but fun. So you can do that. What was that mech game where you could you could buy the? Like it would come in a case like that, and you'd bring it out, and you'd be able to move like around. It was a console game. Oh like god, you about Steel ago. Battalion. Steel Battalion, yeah. It's worth hundreds of dollars now. Yeah, it was for the original Xbox Steel Battalion, and then they tried to make a version for the Kinect on Xbox 360, and it was abysmal. Any, any game that comes in a flight case, I'm, uh, I've got all the time in the world for. True, yeah. Well, that, that game had its own eject button. And if you didn't eject, it was like an old... It, it, was a, it, was a rogue, it was rogue, basically, because if you didn't eject, it wiped your save game file. Wow, I mean, that's yeah. hardcore. Yeah, they, they weren't fucking around with that game. But, yeah, Battletech, um, Co-Carnage was playing a bunch of it in the campaign. I've got it as well. I'm not sure it's a great game to watch. I think something like XCOM is a much better game to watch because instant death on characters you've been maybe keeping an eye on for ages and you've built up a rapport with, especially if you name them after your subs. That's always fun to watch. And that game has some inherent unfairness in it. Whereas I think Battletech, it's a bit more slow paced. It's a bit more tactical, a bit more cerebral. Probably not going to be that much fun for a lot of people to watch. But to play for a certain subset of people who've been waiting for a good mech game for fuck how long? It's what been, what it's is the last good a one? Long time. I mean, if you don't count Mech Warrior Online, which a lot of people don't. Hawken? Was it Hawken? I don't even count Hawken as a mech game because mm. the game. Oh the, my god, I forgot Hawken existed. Yeah. Someone Hawken. said it in chat, and I'm just like, all Hawken of a sudden, it just flooded back. Well, it was super <laughs> fast. Like, uh, Hawken was more like playing a traditional first-person shooter. Like, they right. didn't move like mechs. They moved like armored suits 
like exosuits, basically. You want something that moves like a mech, that's slow and wieldy and all that kind of thing? Yeah, it's you got to go back quite a far way to play a really good one. Titanfall? I, no, I, I don't count Titanfall as one either. Battlefield 2142. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Battlefield 2142. So I'm maybe. scraping the yeah. barrel right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think um, I, I don't think Titanfall was a good mech game because it has the same problem. You know, it's like these these weren't these big unwieldy vehicles. They were basically like you bigger. It was just an extension of you. It's like, hey, you're 12 foot tall now. Look, you have a gun that you could feasibly have as a regular dude it's just bigger you know you can do the same things that you can do on foot whereas in something like mech warrior now you are big and unwieldy and you are you know god of death on the battlefield that did not die very quickly it's very hard to bring a mech down yes yeah, a genre it's uh disappeared a little yep that's another example of a genre that just vanished despite people saying hey there's desire for it and to be fair they backed battletech with a lot of money mm. so evidently there was a desire for it and thankfully from the build that i've played up to this point it's fucking great it's good that's good yeah for for those who want that kind of game now very that's a very specific kind of game that i wouldn't blame anybody for not liking because of you know it is a slow paced game and that's where mm. the satisfaction comes from It's good shit, though, in my opinion. Nice. Nice to play that after Into the Breach, which I suppose was technically a mech game as well, but that was more of a puzzle game and shoving bugs into lava than anything else, which is still fun. Yeah, I was thinking about Into the Breach when we were, like, discussing tactics games with robots, basically. Yeah. But it did it did have enough different about it that I don't think it counts as what you're wanting. It's a, I mean, Into the Breach is an excellent game. It's simply, it crosses the, it kind of straddles the line between a tactics game and a puzzle game. Because you know what the enemy's going to do, it almost turns into more of a puzzle game, more so than anything else. I think that's cool, though. That's actually really enjoyable. That's one of those, I love it when a plan comes together kind of games. And then mm -hmm. simultaneously, if you fuck it even once, or you didn't notice something... That's really annoying to me. It's like, ah, oh, fuck. I left my mech under the lava fall or whatever, and I forgot to move it. Well, that's gone for the rest of the game now. Fuck me, I guess. I'm an idiot. It's more of a attention check than anything else. Yeah, that's fun, though. Should we take a break? Then we'll sure. come back and we'll talk a little bit more about some video games we've been playing. And if we... Haven't been playing any video games. I'm sure we can find something else to talk about. We'll try and not regale you with tales of WrestleMania for an hour. I was going to say, there have been so many people in chat who are like, have they already talked <laughs> about WrestleMania? Wrestling? Did I miss it? It's, what, it's like, one, it's not a wrestling show. <laughs> Two of the people on the show are not into wrestling. And unless these guys suddenly watched WrestleMania over the weekend, which I'm no. going to assume that they did not then we probably will not bring it up, no. We we might mention Ronda Rousey briefly for those who are interested in how that went down. Sure. Maybe that, but no. We, we will not do an hour's worth of wrestling talk while they used to sit there with just a look on their face. Like The only people that are on camera are just like... Yeah, that would be, <laughs> that would be really quite awkward. So let's not do that. But we'll be back after the break with something... Can't guarantee what, but it's prob probably watchable. Well, probably. We'll, we'll we can guarantee. At the very least, you can watch least. it and not die. Yes, yeah. that is yeah. true. And that, and at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask for. In, <laughs> the in cool optional podcast. Times. You can watch it. Yeah, you can watch <laughs> you it. Watch and it. And you can watch you know, it. We will probably not kill you. It's probably, well, we're not going to be responsible for your deaths, most likely. So. Hmm. I think that's a pretty good deal. We're right back after the break. Don't go anywhere. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the co-optional podcast. Hopefully Hello. you had a wonderful break. Hello. Enjoyed the sounds of Big Nick with the soundtrack from Domina. And 
Bear McCreary stuff from Dark Void, the only good thing about that damn game. <sighs> How do you fuck that up? You've got Bear McCreary doing the soundtrack to a, basically a rocketeer, I have a jetpack and I'm going to fly around saving the world in full 3D kind of thing. Mm. And you fuck it up. It, the, your game ends up being horrible. I don't understand how you can do that, but apparently it can be done. It is possible to ruin everything that can be ruined. It is possible yeah. to ruin any everything. game, no matter how good it looks. Yes. Yeah. Just like movies, it's possible for every trailer to look amazing and for the movie to be garbage. And it's always a good a good idea, in my opinion, to avoid trailers as a direct result. That also applies sometimes to games. But hey. What else That's have true. we been playing this week? Um, I played that minute game. Ah, yes. Uh, it's a called... game where you play it in sections of 60 seconds. Yeah, it's spelled M-I-N-I-T. M-I-N-I-T. Right? Yes. Oh, it's M-I-N-I-T. Yeah. Okay, minute. Got it. Yes. Um, so this game is uh, pretty short. It took a, a couple hours to beat. Um, and... Yeah, you play it in sections of 60 seconds. You wake up in your house and uh, it gives you no information whatsoever. It's just like, go for it. You got 60 seconds, right? So uh, as you kind of like explore around, you find items. And by talking to people, uh, you know, you'll hear things like, oh man, if only somebody could put out this fire and eventually you'll find, you know, like a watering bucket or something and be like, oh, I can put out the fire with that. But you can only do stuff in sections of 60 seconds. So every time you wake up, you need to be like, okay, I got to go do this now, <laughs> right? Um, things like like getting important items, you wake up with those items again. Okay. So when you find like a sword, the, you always have the sword. Um the water pail you always have the water pail right and there are multiple items that are like that uh but yeah the game winds up you there are multiple different bases that you can find so that um your 60 seconds is well spent you can be like okay i need to be at this base so that when i respawn after the 60 seconds then i can go to this other area and not waste so much time like that kind of a thing uh <clears throat> and there's more stuff to do in the game than what I did, but I did like the full story. How long did it take you? I think two hours. Okay. Something like that. It was short. Um, but it, it had like, it had an intriguing quality to it for sure. And the new game plus, uh, you have to do everything in 40 seconds. So wow. was... yeah. So I was like, fuck that. I'm out. <laughs> So it's a bit of a bit of a speed running game, but also uh, a kind of a game that requires a bunch of planning, I guess, and learning. How much trial by error would you say there is in there? Uh, there was there was trial by error in terms of. I think I know what I'm supposed to do, but then you'd get there and be like, "Shit, I, <laughs> that's not what I was supposed to do," right. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it it was pretty rare. I would say that I would say that about half of I, you know, died. I reached sixty seconds many, 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 many times, but uh, I would say that like a third of those were wastes. And it also gives you a button that you can hit if you're using like a controller. I think it's B. You can hit B to just die. <laughs> If you just, just like, like right, this is no, I fucked this up. Let's yeah, just... I spent those thirty seconds going in the wrong direction or yeah. whatever else. Just fucking never mind. Start well, over. You know. Well, this kind of um, reminds me of the way that um, problems are often solved in David Cage games, where you've got to do a certain number of things in a certain number of order to, in a certain time, and like you're seeing shit go down in the background um, while you're trying to do those and. Mm. That might not sound all that familiar, but it's the notion of I've learned everything I need to do and now I need to execute the whole thing in a certain amount of time as a kind right. of puzzle solving idea. Well, yeah, and there's um, like 
there's there's really funny stuff too uh like the the footage that i think um was shown people are talking about how the text scroll speed was really slow it's because there there are times in the game where you have to listen to all of the dialogue from a person but it literally takes the full amount of time that you have (laughs) so you have to just sit there and be like I hope I got here quick enough that I'm going to hear everything you have to say, you know? Oh, God, uh, that's that's horrendous. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that I, I thought was actually really funny. What happens at the end of the minute? Do you just keel over and die? Is this a congenital heart failure or what? <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't, I don't think that there is... Failure. Okay. I don't think that there is a story reason for why you're doing things in sections of a minute. But okay. yeah, all right then. It's yeah. So it it wound up being an intriguing, easy game to play. Okay. Um, the other one that I wanted to mention was I finally finished um, Batman: The Enemy Within. Right. Yeah, you've been on that one for months because obviously it is an episodic game. Well, like I hadn't played the last three chapters. I just kept forgetting about it. And then the final chapter came out and I was like, all right, I guess now's the time we're going to just play the rest of this game. Um, Do you remember when the, when the first Telltale Batman game came out and we were like, there's potential here. This is interesting. We said Um, that about a lot of Telltale games. You remember when the first episode came out? It's like, yeah, I could see this going places. And then we never went back to it. Yeah, so um, the second one, I I remember saying this when the first chapter of the second one came out, but it it built on, you know, the same world and characters and everything from the first game. Um, this is the sort of Batman story where they they've retold a lot of things. Right, things are different than how they are in the typical canon, um, and. This one I thought was really good, like really, really good story wise. And um, the final chapter, depending on what you've done, there are like two different, like completely different versions of the final chapter, which I think is interesting. So I played through the game, got to the end and was like, whoa. And then everyone was like, yeah, but like, that could have been completely different. So uh, I'm I'm delighted by that <laughs> because Telltale's made so many fucking games and we're always like, yeah, you know, it's a, it was a good story, but I was obviously on rails for the most part, you know? Yeah. Um, so for them to have a game come out where everyone's saying, yeah, if you had, it's hard to talk about without being super vague, mm-hmm. but yeah, if you had, if you had done all of this stuff differently um you would have wound up with a totally different situation on your hands you know so i thought that was i thought that was pretty cool a lot of people who were watching said that they saw scenes in the last like couple of chapters that i played they saw scenes that they had never seen before or that were completely different in their playthrough so i was like good on you telltale i'm so proud (laughs) put the resources in and a lot of that is what it is it's A case of you can't necessarily have there be a massive new branching scene for every single thing you ever do, which is why a lot of these games get, you know, they get wide in the middle and then they come together at the end. Yeah, they do. It is cool to have different scenes at the end, though, like that, that you can actually be involved in. It's not just, oh, here's some different scrolling text or here's a different animation or whatever. I'm sure you'll be fine with that. Yeah, one of the only people that I know who played through all of it and said that they really liked it was Cry. So I went to Cry and I was like, all right, did you do this or this? And we made almost entirely the exact same choices, which yeah. is a bummer. I thought maybe that wouldn't be the case because um, I kept getting statistics that were like, oh, only 20, you and 20% of players did this. You and 30% of players did this. And I was like, oh shit, I actually didn't do a lot of like status quo choices. So I was really excited to talk to Cry and see if he and I made different choices. He was deliberately being an edge lord as well, so no, you don't get to. <laughs> oh, well. he uh, he went in the first game. You're given an opportunity uh, to bone down with Catwoman, and I was like, nah. And so I decided to continue in my in my like 
friend zoning journey of Catwoman and Jesus Christ. This game, this second one really, really, really wanted you to get with Catwoman. Like every character was like, so what's up with you and Selena? It was like nothing. She's just a friend. Putting my it's foot strictly down. professional. And everyone's like, all right, buddy. Uh. <laughs> I was like, no, no, this fucking game. And Selena keeps coming on to you. And you're like, girl, I don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> don't want you and then it turned out uh only 0.01 percent of players tell her no wow so <laughs> that is an impressive there's that amount if of you resisting. Uh, apparently people cave real hard they're like you oh. know what never mind i do i do want to bone down with selena Good not Lord. if you commit the game's like wow well done <laughs> you actually pulled that off well done yeah congratulations <laughs> But overall, yeah, that game I thought was great. Like the first one, at the end I was going, man, there was some really cool story stuff in that. But the second one just like, I think from start to finish overall, I was going, yeah. The one thing uh, that it did that I think all Telltale games are guilty of sometimes is uh, you having an opportunity to like, give a character a thing or not give a character a thing and you're like ah i don't think i want to give that to you and then later it turns out that they have it <laughs> you're like <laughs> okay what <laughs> but i didn't give that to you right the um and i don't know if those were bugs or like the story They're glitching out or extremely what, good at pickpocketing right i kept waiting for explanations like oh well and, you know, it would have pissed me off anyway, because it would have been, like, illusion of choice. Yeah. But I kept waiting for somebody to be like, ah, oh, well, you wouldn't give it to me, so I just took it. That that never happened. <laughs> they just had it somehow, and I was like, okay. All right. Um, so little stuff like that. Well, I'm glad it turned it out well, because, you know, It's Telltale good, though, yeah. has churned out a lot of games, let's just put it that way. Mm. So hopefully they can keep the quality up, and this is a good indicator of that. I've been traveling a bit, so I, I took the parents to Vegas because I figure that's never going to happen mm. unless unless I prompt them, unless we say we are going to Vegas and you don't have a choice in the matter. That's, you know, that's not the kind of place that my parents would generally go. So we took them to Vegas and it was awesome and all that good stuff. I'm not going to talk too much about that. But of course, as I've been traveling, that means it's like, what do I want to travel with? Am I going to play a mobile game or something like that? Did I find something worthwhile well jen's been playing a shit ton of armello on mobile uh the mobile version of armello now they fixed the game crippling bug that uh oh. made her lose all her progress she wasn't too happy about that one so that wasn't great but apparently the mobile version of armello is worth playing it's got a bit of a weird currency system going on for unlocks like you could play it for free mm -hmm. but uh, you unlock certain characters for money but then you want to look other stuff for this other in-game currency that you earn, which is, I think, how you get the rare dice and shit like that. I I don't really 100% understand it, but apparently it is still worth playing. The AI is a lot of fun. So Jen's been having a pretty good time with the iOS version of Armello. Uh, I stumbled across a game that I did not expect to be very good, which mm. a lot of people around here probably still won't like. Uh, because it's my sort of thing that I like on mobile. I know a lot of people don't. And uh, the name of it's, uh, it's either Galactic Frontier or Frontier Galactic. I think it's Galactic Frontier. And it's a NetEase game. And NetEase is a big Chinese publisher, which, let's be honest, you don't necessarily expect good things from, right? Especially not, mm. not in the West. Well, I was uh, schooled by a few people on Twitter who said apparently NetEase has been going out of its way to shed that image, especially, you know, they, they have that image in China because that's how a lot of Chinese games are sold. Mm. But they realize that in the West, people mm. are pretty getting pretty pissed about this whole gacha thing. They're getting pretty pissed about the poor monetization and energy bars and all that kind of thing. So mm. they're like, you know what? We're going to design some games that don't do that and see how well they do. And Galactic Frontier attracted me because there was a piece of art that was very clearly a Protoss. I was like, <laughs> right out of the gate. It's like, okay, this is a Protoss, right? You were like, I love asset stealing. It's like, yeah. But the thing is, as it turns out, they hadn't stolen anything. They'd just drawn it all. And right. it, yeah, it looked like a Protoss, but none of the stuff that 
they actually had ship wise really looked too much like a protoss and the game is a it, you can play one of three factions a kind of human faction a biomechanical faction who isn't really zerg kind of like a mixture of zerg and klingon i guess mm. okay. and then the sort of advanced alien faction and then everybody can also get ai units as well which is like a neutral fourth faction and it's a game where you build up a a fleet is it and called it's it's called either galactic frontier or frontier galactic I can't is it called which. galaxy legend space frontier no not in the slightest why i just, I just was i was trying to find the game and i saw it this game also has protoss ships in it that game also has protoss ships in it yeah I just, uh, I'm trying to figure out what game this is. I can't find it. It's like so a that's mystery. Galactic Frontiers. Uh, that's obviously the wrong game. I, it probably is Frontier Galactic. Or something. It, it just has such a generic goddamn name to it. I'm going to have to go and touch arcade now to try and find it. Because, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm Googling it and I can't find the game that I'm playing. I've probably even forgotten the name. Are of it, you anyway. even playing a game? I don't think I have. I don't think are, I have. Is this like one of those? One. They're testing the aliens are testing your your strategic like value, and they're gonna recruit you to help them fight a space war. It is possible that I am Ender. I, I'm just saying. If that's the case, the case, all right. I can't believe it. I'm having to find the name of this fucking game because I don't know. Galactic where it's Frontline. Gone. Galactic Frontline. <clears throat> yes. That's the confusion, I think, because that's the actual name of the game, as opposed to what <laughs> I was claiming, which isn't at all that. Oh! Mm -hmm. <laughs> which would explain a lot. Yes, Galactic Frontline is the name of the game that I'm playing. Right, there you go. Ah, I'm an idiot. What can I say? Oh, this looks cool. Yeah, it's uh, basically it is a if you played a lot of the Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 mods where it's like you have a kind of base and you build units and they fly at the other dude and they attack each other. It's that in space. You've got a capital ship. Capital ship dies, you die. Capital ship has an ability and can also be upgraded with all sorts of other shit. And you pick escort vessels to go along with them and they usually have buffs and they provide weapons that you can use like cooldown based abilities. And then you have your waves of ships that go at the enemy. And it's a case of picking the right kind of composition. There's a really nice research tree for each ship that lets you research all sorts of different tech for them and make them powerful in different ways. You got to come up with a really cool fleet combination that actually works. And what surprised me is the amount of content this game has. It's stacked full of content. It's got a full single player campaign with cutscenes, with VO, and it's got full-on PvP. It's even got AI tournaments. And uh, it's got a fucking alliance quiz. Like, you can join an alliance, and every week you can take a quiz about the game, and you can earn currency just by doing this quiz. I shit huh. you not. It's like, I don't know why that's there, but it is, and it's kind of neat. I'm just showing you let's have a little bit of the game, I think, running on Android right now. It's just the production values of the game for a mobile game it really, really impressed me. And in terms of, like, the amount of money the game is asking of you, bare minimum is the answer to that. Hmm. But that bridge looks real damn familiar. Very familiar. <laughs> that's uh, that's half Star nah, Wars, it's half fine. Starcraft it's is fine. what that is. Yeah, there's, there's a pretty blatant stuff going on. There's no on adjunct there. there. There's that. No, 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 no absolutely that. not. <laughs> no, 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 I don't recognize any of that. What is a bridge in a spaceship? It's always just going to be a big screen looking out in space. Pretty everyone much. looking yeah. busy. Can getting you, ready to get killed. Yeah, but it's like, can, can you really necessarily look too different to that? It's, it's hard to say. But I've played it off and on. I've really been enjoying it. Like I said, it's got this big research tree. The hmm. monetization seems pretty fair. Uh, the PvP is fun. The campaign is lengthy. Uh, you just get showered in resources. Like, I think that's what NetEase seems to have figured out. People like being given a bunch of free shit. Totally. Yeah. So that is exactly what happened. They give you free shit for achievements and everything all the time. Like in bonuses. Yeah, all that shit. I exactly. Love all that. New unlocks <laughs> for new stuff. 
there's some interesting units in there there's some really cool shit uh i've got this one that uh splits into two smaller units if it dies there's one that uh randomly imitates a completely different ai unit if it takes too much fire and shit like that you can get a giant cruiser with a big laser that just sweeps across the battlefield there's some fun shit going on for a mobile game that's what i'm saying yeah which often for a mobile game is enough you want something that's not there to completely rip you off and you want something that's at least worth playing and for me it's, this is you know it's a good uh, few fun few minutes for a round which mm. is more than i could say for the fucking pacific rim game that Oof. also popped up on mobile i did not expect much and i received even less <laughs> Holy fuck. Uh, I don't know if it is by the same game that made the WWE Match 3 game. But I'm sorry, what? The, the, there was a WWE Match 3 game. What does that even entail? It entitles... <laughs> well, you know how Match 3 is used as a battle system? Right. In yeah. a lot of different kinds of games. To so blow off ladies' right. clothes. That's right. yeah, the only thing I know one. it for. Yep, that's right. one. It's done in Honey Pop. Uh, sure. to, to hit and others men many others wearing many clothes to begin with that's another one and <laughs> they decided to use it for pacific rim and i don't mind the match three battle system wait what they what yeah right look i don't mind the match three battle system like you play a game like iron cast which is a steampunk mech game based around this and it's super good right. they what they did was here they took that wrestling game and they've pretty clearly taken that wrestling game Either they own that game or they have stolen it flat out and they have put it on mobile and reskinned it to look like Pacific Rim. It's called Breach Wars and fuck me, it is bad. Uh it is just awful. They it's the it's all gacha bullshit. As of course, you know, when you go into a Pacific Rim game, what do you want? You want your Cherno Alpha, right? You want your really cool mechs. You're not getting them. You're going to have some piece of shit mech that nobody knows the name of. You know, here's some fucking footage from it. Apologies that it's in vertical. The game can only be played vertical. Oh my god. The uh, This does not look good. No. Uh, and if anyone has played that WWE game, they can see... It's identical, even down to the... There's a pinning system, except it's called a domination system in this one. So it used to be you beat them up enough and you could pin them for one, two, three to end the match quickly, which was merciful because that game was fucking boring. And here you can see, dominated. So you hit them a bit, and then they've got to hit you a bunch to see if they get out of the domination, whatever that is. It's fucking terrible. I mean, I heard the new movie wasn't that great, but it's really not. If if you enjoyed the, the original one, Pacific Rim, am I gonna hate the new one? The new one, you're gonna be like, man, this is basically like a new Transformers movie. Oh <laughs> no, that's that's how we felt. We were like, you know what? We got to see some new robots. Yeah. beat up some new monsters yeah that's like really all that we thought we were going to get out of it so it's fine but we immediately came home and watched the first pacific rim and we're like but the monsters look so much better in this one and so do the robots and like they obviously had a budget and this... <laughs> all of the characters aren't children <laughs> you know yeah is it still Sam... the original director Huh? And was Guillermo del Toro actually involved? He's not involved. No. 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 There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we found the reason. It, it was obviously yeah. busy winning Oscars for the Sam, Shape of Water. But... Sam was wondering if, because literally most of the cast of this one was kids. And so he was okay. like, I I'm turning what? This off. I can't get... watch any more of this stupid fucking game. <laughs> Continue. He was like, did they get cleared for, you know, like two more movies or something? And so this is like establishing them before they become like actual good pilots or something. But like, it felt like it felt like one of the new Transformers movies and the CW decided to make a Pacific Rim movie together. Oh dear. 
That's what people want. That's what people wanted. That's terrible. <laughs> it was fine, but it was not. It was not anywhere near the first one. No. Not even close. No. I mean, I'm a big advocate for the first one. It helps that the three of us were literally in fucking yeah. suits to promote Hashtag, the movie. Uh, sponsored a long time ago. Indeed. Yeah. Sponsored <laughs> like five years ago. Yeah. From Guillermo del Toro, but oh dear, that that's really disappointing. And as I said, that the mo the fucking mobile game is shitty. Like mm -hmm. it really, I like match three games just in general. So if you just throw a good theme on them and don't take the piss when it comes to monetization, I'll probably play them a bit. But what did this do right out of the gate? Gotcha, 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 monetizing, monetizing. Here's 5,000 different weird fucking currencies and items. You, they're not real items. You don't know what they are because they're just shit. They're just stuff. They're stuff you put on your mech to make the numbers go up. That's all it is. That, did you? Did any of you try the new, what is it called, Marvel Strike Force that also mm -hmm. came out this week? It's another fucking gacha mobile RPG. <laughs> this one's like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes to the point where the UI is also fucking identical in many ways. It looks nice, but the whole thing is, again, just another giant gacha game because they know you want your Wolverine and you want all your favorite characters and you're willing to throw money at them for them. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> It's tiresome. It's so very, very tiresome. Just, which does not make a good licensed game. Is that actually really that hard these days? Apparently, yeah. Yeah. Apparently uh, it is. Since we're talking about mobile games. Unless, uh, you have, unless you've got something better. Oh, I, I was just going to say that, because I don't remember us mentioning this on the podcast up to this point go for but, it but um darkest dungeon on mobile finally has all of the dlc yes it does yes it does so sam and i started brand new games yep and uh we are doing very different tactics i'm not going to the courtyard at all at the beginning and he yeah, immediately went to the courtyard nothing. and yeah. he's getting super fucked up and i feel yeah. so bad for him but um yeah so that's that's been fun the mobile version is the best um in my opinion i i mean it's it's really good it's when i'm it's when i'm going to use an ability and i want to see the likelihood that i'll hit somebody that's when i misclick a lot ah and if i like do you have to hold the ability and then i'm or? hovering on a person and i'm like ah. okay i don't want to actually attack this person i just want to see if this ability has like a good chance to hit and then if i if i hit it wrong or if i like like you know yeah, I, sometimes you just it just uses the ability um i got it around it by just doing the mathematics in my head because a lot of them are quite simple like mm -hmm. as you'll have your base hit chance is displayed on the screen all the time i believe and then you just you look at the ability and it'll say minus 10 percent, so you can just do the math in your head but it's different depending on where they are in the row is it is yeah. accuracy actually affected that way? Yeah. I so like some abilities that. will have a better chance to hit people. Like they can hit anybody, but they'll hit better really? in the back versus the front. Yeah. How did I not know that? Fuck me. I've been playing the yeah. game for years. So I keep well, like, like hovering over everybody and like trying to get my hand out of the way so that I could actually yeah. see and be like, okay, who's who's this actually going to fuck? <laughs> actually, that that, that <laughs> might make some of my games a lot easier, I have to say. But I still think, I think the tablet version is the best version of the game for the most part. I, mm -hmm. I don't like the Switch version. The controls on the Switch version are a nightmare. The yeah. touch screen is too small to effectively use properly for it. If you use it on a good sized tablet, uh, Darkest Dungeon's great. Obviously, it's good mm. on PC as well, but it's a really nice portable game to have. So, what do you use? Um, because I've I've seen the pictures. What do you use to like hold your iPad up so that you don't have to? I have to... a stand, uh, sort of a posable stand uh, that holds the st it holds the tablet on the stand using bungee cords. It's like four little bungee cords. Amazing. So, okay. Yeah, you can easily like take it out and slot it right back in, uh, and then you can move the stand around. It's got wheels, so you can put it wherever, and then just angle it to any height, any way you want, upside down, back to front. 
Uh, it's fucking perfect for you. Either you want to watch a bunch of Netflix on your tablet and you don't want to have to hold it, or mm. you're like, I want to do some Darkest Dungeon. And I'm just going to lay in bed and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's several there's several stands that do that. I can send you the one that I use after the show. Yes, if you please. Want. I will do I that. I would love to see that. Yeah, both me and my wife use those stands, and they're very good. <laughs> I would recommend them personally. <sighs> Hell of a DLC, though. Absolutely excellent. And they're doing more. When's the next one soon, right? Really soon. Uh, I don't know. They released Shieldbreaker not that long ago. Yeah, because and... they've got this, the, the new cosmic one that's adding some new enemies and weird shit to the game. I just... The problem is there's gonna we're going to be waiting another six fucking months on the iOS version, aren't we? Oh, dear. What's, what's the name of it? What do you mean the site can't be reached? Color of Madness? Color that... of Madness, yes. Yeah. It'll be out in about two months, apparently. What What is the Color of Madness? Well, I think... Um, uh, Going well, by these pictures, it's a it's a very bright green. <laughs> hmm. mm. 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 Chaotic. Uh, mm. Yes, chaos. You say. <laughs> ah, Vermintide. I do want more Vermintide in my life. They're making some what? What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> I'm not. I can't look at you, TB. Unfortunately, but, <laughs> but I, uh... <laughs> let's just assume that you can. Just so, cuz then the sentence works better. I'm I'm looking at a thing for the color of madness. I okay. didn't realize that it revolves around a comet that yes. crashes. Uh-huh. I think that's isn't that a Wait, what? It's a short isn't this a HP Lovecraft short story the color of madness? Something uh like maybe. Get lost just... in time and space as you confront waves of enemies new and old pushing ever closer to the crash site of the comet. Huh. I just well, well. your reaction to the then words you said seemed odd because it felt like, like going from going from that it felt like they were gonna be like you know what fuck all this eldritch shit this is about aliens now <laughs> no <laughs> no but aliens are like the outer gods that, that's mm, that's the, the thing that's how Lovecraft yeah. like dealt that's how it with starts aliens. man they're like aliens they're from beyond the stars still yeah. But yeah. they're just not aliens in the way that you would view them. I believe it may have been based on a short story called The Color Out of Space by H.P. Lovecraft in 1927. It's possible that that's what they based it on. Or alternatively, they just pulled some Lovecraftian words together and said, Elder Gods, Cthulhu, everybody loves Cthulhu, right? For Targan? For Targan. Yes. Probably yeah. something like that. I imagine that's how it went down. They're in a boardroom. They're just like, Vitagin? Vitagin? Hey! Oh, all right. There's a Vitagin in here. There's one guy who completely misinterprets it, and he's like already putting on his robe. <laughs> he's like, I'm ready, guys, finally. Oh, my. Yeah. Want to see that. Want to check that there out. There you go. It's hmm? an interesting short story. Because the, the, the idea of like a crash site and kind of an exclusion zone, I always thought. First of all, I love the Stalker games, uh, Shadow of Chernobyl. Oh, yes. Um, and that came from a book called Roadside Picnic, which is like the same idea. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Annihilation recently. kind of takes the same themes. And I heard some genre. good things about that. It's really good. Very good things about that. For, check it out. It's really worth it. I thought it was really good. But um, this predates all that, and it's yep. a similar kind of idea. Well, most of it. this stuff does, because all the Lovecraft stuff is now public domain. So uh, you can basically nick anything you want. This is why there's so many Lovecraft themes in so many different places. So why isn't there better games on it? You see, that is a good question. There is a one that was announced recently that looks pretty sick. Um, but more often than not, you find those little things popping up in indie games. Just little splashes of Lovecraft here and there. And then occasionally you get something big like Bloodborne, which is very clearly Lovecraft pretty awesome subject matter there's a lot of subject matter to dive into on that so you can make a lot of different games in it well i think you're talking about um uh pacific rim i think uh he's trying to make the mouth of madness film yes and i think yeah. he's finally got it because he's been trying for ages so maybe, madness, yeah. so maybe he sold like yeah go on make another he's, uh, pacific rim film i just yeah to he, make so this. he sold off his rights to pacific rim so he could make uh, mountains of madness that would be cool i wouldn't be surprised i would i would love to see you know big cthulhu sort of brought to big screen i think the closest scene to that was probably 
Cabin in the Woods, not to spoil too much. But... I think a lot of his other horror films have been kind of that kind of style. And like yeah. Pan's Labyrinth, like, yeah, true. you know, has that kind of feeling as well. I love oh, it's one of my favorite films. It's absolutely fantastic. Scary. Has anyone been playing anything else this week? I've been playing loads of Rainbow Six. <laughs> yeah, you you said you've been right back on the bandwagon of that one. And you did not until recently, and I take full credit for this, know that you can make a huge amount of currency by doing the missions in the game. Uh, terrace Hunt. Yep. Yeah, you were telling terrace me yesterday. Hunt missions, yeah. I had no idea. Like, I, I've just been jumping into casual games, getting smashed. You didn't, my get, you didn't get jump the trial version, did you? No, no, I got the, no. I got the full got version. Got the full version, okay. Good. But it's like a, it's it, it's one of those games that I heard didn't have a great launch. Um, yep. I, I I you know didn't really want to jump in. Uh, loads of other people been playing it. Some uh, some streamers of uh, and, and friends I know. Uh, so I was just like I was watching a guy called Panky play, and I was just like, okay, this looks good fun. I'll I'll give it a go. Downloaded it. Um, I've not stopped since, and in fact, it's to the point where I'm not even playing Overwatch now, which used wow. to be my day-to-day -day routine. It got you off that. Yeah, it got me mm. off that drug, and now I'm on another one where I never feel good at the game at all in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> and just constantly feel miserable about myself, which is pr right. pretty much every competitive game I play these days. But is it a better form of misery than the Overwatch misery? Because it shocks me how angry people get at Overwatch. Like, it for a game that is as colorful as it is that promotes a message of positivity in the way that it does that has this huge selection of different champions you can switch to at will you know you're not stuck with one you could just switch anytime and yet the um, i have not seen just sheer toxicity of that level in a team-based game for ages like to the point where i would say that it's worse than dota no no, I, I would genuinely. I believe. No. No, I, I played years of Dota and I played a good amount of Overwatch, and I really genuinely think that Overwatch has got some serious, serious issues to deal with when it comes to people being assholes to each other. I don't know what causes it. I can't figure it out. People. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's, it, there's it, loads of team-based games. Why? Why is Overwatch cause you got, cause so unpleasant? You got to all hit the same thing at the same time you pretty much all got to work the same same way as the, the mobile games all of these have the same issues like the the kind of rage you get everyone has to do something at the specific time if they don't hate on that guy hate on that person also it's never me it's yeah. always the yeah, other guy hence why team games are uh, usually more popular in single player games because you can just blame the guy next to you i yeah. always yep. do um, and, and Dota is it, worse for me than Overwatch because an Overwatch game doesn't take as long where a Dota game, True. I'm stuck in that prison with them until the very end and by the end of it, as if voice is on you, you've you been saying some things yeah, yeah I mean Heroes of New have had some absolute scary things, that was back when like before even people were even considering trying to tackle this kind of issues there were some vile things that would happen in that on a regular basis Oh yeah, mm. no, no, no doubt on that one. No doubt. Uh, my experience with Rainbow Six is, I mean, I haven't played enough of it to really get an impression of how people generally acted in it. It seemed reasonable for the most part. Yeah, like no, seriously, what I, I can I, tell. I, like I, a lot of it seemed to be like, oh, I died, so I'm gonna spectate and cheer on the other dudes on my team. And yeah, that that felt pretty way. good, actually. It's, it, it gives you feel like you're, you're kind of working a bit more together, but you can play solo as well and do quite as well. Um, but then again, I'm playing casual here, so you know, <laughs> maybe if I played a bit more of a competitor, I think the game plays quite differently. But it's really good. Like honestly, as a as a long time FPS player, like to find something like this that doesn't instantly make me sick playing is difficult. Like I, as I've got older, I found it really hard to play a lot of games these days like really hard and it's annoying i don't have that energy just to enjoy a game just yeah. jumping into it anymore yeah i have to like be prepped up and ready to go i don't i don't have a lot of um i don't have a lot of patience for trying a game that everybody says is good if i know that it's gonna take me a while to learn it if that makes sense like right. a lot of, a lot of times when i'm just looking to enjoy a game my brain goes, 
I already know how to play this. <laughs> so maybe I'll just play that instead of trying this other thing that everybody says is fantastic, but I would have to learn it. Yeah. You know, and that's not what I want to be doing with my time right now is like learning a new game. Yeah, and it's easy to get stuck in a rut if you have that attitude for too long. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I was like, oh. Yeah, Dodger. I have all I of these games and yet haven't played any of them. You know, well, or... it's also the reason why so many games have similar sort of like base mechanics is because it's yes. easy to jump in, even though there are things that might be different. Mm -hmm the baseline of like oh i understand how this plays then you're more willing to learn rather than like yeah so um x is b and uh trigger z is that's the reason why i cannot for the life of me give uh smash a chance i just don't care <laughs> the controls are so stupid compared to other fighting games i just don't <laughs> care i'm like okay. i don't you lost me for moment one mm. it's strange because i have more games now on my steam profile uh steam account than i ever did as a kid but i feel i have even less to play <laughs> but if i had the account back when i was like or 10 or whatever i'd never leave the house not what i did but definitely wouldn't i'd just be going through all of them now i'm sitting there looking at my steam account and i'm just like what am i going to play today i know rainbow six <laughs> Right. Well, it is a good one for uh, the next six months yeah and a reminder <laughs> if you do pick this up you do not buy i don't even know if they still have it available if they do ubisoft needs to take it the fuck off the store the goddamn starter edition for rainbow six siege is a ripoff like it is a long-term trap in the sense that they are luring you in to a cheaper version that takes way way longer to unlock all the stuff you want it's not worth it it's not worth the saving get the full version and make sure you do a bunch of the single player because you'll get a bunch of content nice and quickly that way mm. and it is absolutely enough to play because let's be honest you know they're all still guys with guns or girls with guns they're not wildly different. It's like, oh, we need a tank and a healer and a DPS. No, you don't. No, you right. don't. You need some guns and some good aim, and you need to start to learn the maps. That's what you need to do. A headshot's a headshot in that uh -huh. game. And I think that that's the thing that doesn't make you so ragey about it. I mean, you are, but you're not, you're not angry at your team for it as much. I think that's the thing that takes it away from it. I, no. I don't find the game toxic at all. No. I, unless I'm playing it. I find it. I find it difficult to blame the team, especially when everything's going down. You know, and there's a breach and maybe we're all defending. It's a five versus five and it's loud and you can't see anything and it's just absolute chaos. I At the end of the day, when all of that settles, I don't blame the team unless some guy turned around and shot us all. You know, it's just, you know, it's going to be a chaotic situation. You just do your best and hope that you actually win. Mm. That's cool. I just want to play it now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I'm on I, the road for another week. For me, it's like, I, the reason I don't play it is because I'm overly intimidated by the maps. I had difficulty learning the original maps, and that was a bunch of extra ones. I'm like, I, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where the best spots are. I don't know where to set up. Uh, I'm confused. I'll probably spend a lot of my time dead. You know, I'll probably have to find a couple of people to play it with. Trying to call positions in that game is hilarious. Just like that stairs. No, that room behind you. The Does, window. Doesn't There's no a, window anymore. They blew it open. I thought, Somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's Above like you. on the ceiling. It's, they've got them. Um, don't they have a thing which tells you where you are now? Or am I wrong? Oh, like, no, it's all there. It's just I don't read it. Don't yeah, read that's... It's too, too much There's the problem, yeah. <laughs> there is the problem. It is a good game in and of itself, though. There's no doubt. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I, I I literally just jump between three games, and I just whichever the FPS one that changes, but it's usually you know I just sit there play one free to play game. And that's usually Warships. Yeah. Um, and play whatever Total War game I'm dealing with at the time, or go back and play Napoleon for some reason at the moment, or I'm playing um like uh, Rainbow Six or yeah. Overwatch. Anyone else done any more Far Cry since we last spoke? Yeah. Yeah. Um. How are you doing on that? Are you still still a fan of it? I I enjoyed a great deal. I think um <laughs> I I discovered truly one of my favorite moments is when I just like there's a mission where you have to 
uh, fight what is basically like a souped up tractor trailer with like a tank or some. It basically what? runs like ruins all the other missions until you get rid of this. You have to get rid of this giant ass tank truck thing. Okay. And all right. I don't know how or why, but I stumbled across a attack helicopter just okay. like in Montana. And I jumped in this thing. I completed that mission and like four other missions all within like two minutes. I just went like, and I just gunned down everyone in it, and they couldn't do anything to me. And then I discovered the real cheat, which was I did by accident because I was trying to land and I, I jumped out of the helicopter and died because I hit a save point in the helicopter from doing a mission. I reloaded in a fully functioning, not at all damaged helicopter. God damn it. It that was like ridiculous. I could do it all over again. It wasn't until I had to do a mission where it made me be on the ground that I left the helicopter behind and then like some random NPC stole it. I was like, no, but it's the one thing that I'm curious about. I haven't a lot of time to play it since, but um, I wrapped up one of the main uh, area campaigns. I'm curious if it happens with all of them. Is there basically the flow of the game so far as, as I can tell is you're allowed the freedom of choosing which of the three areas you want to go to first. Yes. But once you get there, as you progress through your sort of reputation bar of messing with people, yep. there are little checkpoints. And each checkpoint is, oh, right now we're sending out a hit squad to get you and they're going to shoot you with this gun or a bullet that's going to poison you. And no matter what, you're about to enter a story mode. Oh, and and you cannot like if you get shot once by a bullet just once you go like oh and you fall over and then you're immediately taken into a cutscene and then yeah. you're immediately in and like one of those down yeah you have scenes. to yeah it, it, the problem is it doesn't make sense after a while so a great example um this isn't like i'm not i'm gonna be very like non-spoiler with this uh the first time you're captured by one of the guys um it's like escape it's like okay yeah this makes sense i got captured i'm going to escape the next time you get captured, more story information is revealed, but it's like, escape. You're like, wait. Okay. All right. Sure. And okay. then the next time you're like, wait, I'm, am I escaping again? Why don't I just kill this dude and end this shit? It's like, you have right. the opportunity and you're like, no, I got to get out of here. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I just don't. The, After a yeah, while, it gets a little ridiculous. The stuff that gets forced on you is kind of ridiculous uh i mean I, I found faith's area the least enjoyable mostly because all of the drug stuff like i'm sorry like it's actually not good um and i don't think i don't know if they've realized yet that this stuff is just mostly annoying in far cry games it's not that interesting when i saw it the first time okay cool but they've done far cry drug stuff in every single game now and yeah, it's, it's like a trope of Far Cry. Yeah, it really is. And it, it's used to often drag you into slow segments where you barely have any control whatsoever, where they force some narrative down your throat, or to mm -hmm. slow you down or to generally make an area annoying. To me, it actually made an area motion sick. Like, it was just so much, oh, God, you're swaying backwards and forwards and the sparkling on the screen and everything is like, stop it. This is actually yeah. ridiculous. Even even the and I think what's interesting is the the difference in what they did with Far Cry Four when you were sort of drugged out and you were on those like weird you're back in time or whatever the hell you're doing you're like going through the 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 story like the meta story of the game as a dude with a bow and arrow like it's interesting but they're never worth the amount of time you have to go through it. Right, like it's like, yeah, and I fight like demon warriors, but all you have is your bow and arrow and like your pet wolf, and and this one is just like, screen gets crazy and what you know what's happening yeah. and who's your friend and who That's, isn't. That really it's is like, all it is as well. It's yeah, I hate it. I I the, hate those bits. I think I think they, the problem with Far Cry is when people respond to something really really well, they run with that shit. Yeah, it's sort of like it, like the M night Shyamalaning of video games where like they, people just expected him to have twists at the end of his movies now. And in this, because of a game like far cry three, everyone expects to have like a really charismatic bad guy. And everyone expects you have one crazy drug scene. Uh, everyone expects you to have like 
a ridiculous animal that's going to come after you and drive you crazy. Like, there's things that people expect from Far Cry, but it's like nothing new. You're just sort of going like, ah, this is this game's version of that. Okay, cool. So I, the longer you play it, you feel kind of let down? Or Well, I'm not let down by the game. I'm still enjoying it, but I think that there's a lot of room for them to change shit up. And they've done that with this game. They've made improvements, but there's also room to change up sort of the the what you can expect from a game. Like, yeah, like the Far cool Cry. way that a, that a game like Far Cry would flow. I mean, we're not talking mechanically necessarily. They've done a lot right. of mucking about with that, polishing it, sanding off the edges. You know, they've taken a lot of the annoyances away. You know, I gave a huge list last week, I think, or the week before, probably the week before, of stuff that they had sanded off and fixed. But it doesn't really fix the core problem of the way that the story is told and f flows in Far Cry. It's like, you can see where it's going from the very start. And it's like, right, well, there's three areas, you've got to beat the three lieutenants, you're going to be right. kidnapped multiple times in the process, every single area. That's something you're not going to be able to avoid because it's scripted in part of the game. And then eventually, in a really terrible boss fight, you will take down the leader of that area, and then you take over that area, and eventually, you know, you make your way through the big bad at the end. And... Another great, another, oh man, speaking of which, another great example of Far Cry being like, oh, we did it once, let's do it again, is in Far Cry um, uh, 4, there was that moment where it's like at the very beginning, if you just waited around, you'd yeah. get a special ending. Yes. Right? And some people yeah. were like, that's actually the good yeah. ending, right? Um, In this one, same thing. The, in fact, the first yeah. minute that I played when it's like, the, it's like put the handcuffs on him rook and and you have an option to either do it or not or, or it's actually you can either do it or just stand there and wait the first thing i said was like should i wait 10 minutes because i imagine there's gonna be a secret ending here and the of answer, course there the is. is no you go watch it on youtube and not waste yeah time. <laughs> but i mean it's one of those things where it, they say, like oh that worked that last time people love that let's do it, it again it's again. like no that's not that's not like it was cool the that was fun time. because it worked the one time just like in Far Cry 3, the fact that you are running around to a, like, Skrillex, Damian Marley remix destroying a drug field that gets you high. So as you're burning down the drugs, the world is, like, getting crazy. That's a <laughs> fun, weird moment that, like, has, like, boop, 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 in the background, and you're just, like, going nuts. And they're like, yo, people really responded well to that drug scene. Let's do more of more that. Of it's that. like, <laughs> yeah. And that they just keep doing it every single time. And so I hope they will go the other way now and be like, let's give people things that they won't expect. Yeah, just, just, just ease off on it a little bit. All right, let's head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll do the news and releases. You're watching the Crop Show podcast. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the co-optional podcast. Final 40 so minutes of the show. A big thanks, by the way, for Dogbert, of course, coming out because he brought... The Thrones of Britannia, which is the upcoming Total War Saga game, which I'll be oh. putting some footage on the channel of over the next couple cool. of days. Wanted to give him a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so Total War Saga's uh, Thrones of Britannia is our first uh, kind of spin-off of the series, so it's focusing kind of more of a focused time period, so... Unlike Rome and, and kind of the upcoming 3K where it's kind of a much more expansive time period and, and geographical area, this is kind of going to be a lot more focused. <clears throat> so um, it's about the Viking invasions of Britain. So it's going to be Viking, Saxons, you know, uh, iconic. Cool. I mean, for, for, for me and you growing up northeast of England, I mean, Vikings are something yeah. that's like ingrained into the, the mythos of the area. I mean, so kind of a big deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, they reshaped the, the landscape, the names, the towns, the language, and uh, that's something reflected heavily in the game as well. Um, and it's it, it's it's very interesting. It's one kind of for the historical fans and one for the kind of hardcore Total War players. Um, has some of the most impressive siege battles we've ever put together. Um, well, we're showing you one today. I do and have some footage of that, yes, uh, that I can show you as part of that video. And that yeah. is like one of uh, w some of the best things we've uh, had in sieges, and um, also on the campaign. You know, reflecting all about characters and and kind of how they are the strong men of the time period. You know, 
gone are the days of kind of like professional armies of Rome, and now you, you're focusing more on like these warlords and petty kingdoms that are, you know, the proto kingdoms that eventually go on to become England, Scotland, Ireland, or the great sea empire of Canute. Um, Indeed. Which, uh, you know, is, is someone, if you like your historical games, this is going to get your, your fill of that for sure. And it gives you all the challenges of kind of a, of a, a warlord in that time period trying to pull together an inkling of a kingdom that could go on to something greater. Yes, or more than likely just burn to the ground because you completely fucked it up. Which always happens. Yeah. Interesting art style you can see in the little scenes there that's popping up. Uh, you, you said you'd uh, done a big aesthetic change for this game in particular where the portraits look like portraits that would have been maybe drawn at the time yeah i mean going for that style trying to like try and take you back to that time period like jack luster the 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 game director on this he's an obsessive for history and uh you can see that reflected in the game quite heavily especially if you look all the place names they've got all the old anglo-saxon their uh their viking the all these names that basically you know where this is geographically but you don't know if where you it live is. in england anyway yeah even so. if you live in england like everyone knows kind of where london is kind of it's down the bottom bit <laughs> uh yeah, but it's, it's down not there called london and that and no. so uh, and it, it really throws you off but also shows you how much the country's changed in the from the dark ages to the, the modern times but also so how much of it hasn't changed and how much of it has stayed the same that is mm. very true yeah and it's a game of uh keeping your characters in check um keeping your your generals your your family from stabbing you in the back yeah and... there's a little bit of crusader kings in there i know as well as like loyalty and influence and you were saying if a nobleman gets more influence than you have as the king he's probably going to start getting a little bit disloyal and maybe you know get a few ideas of his own <laughs> And all of this while you're yeah. having to deal with conflicts elsewhere, internal strife and everything. There's a lot there, there's a lot of depth and also a lot of replayability. There's three ways to win now. Instead of just painting the map like one colour, you can get a kingdom victory, which is like the most, for me, as a long time total player and a history nerd, like being able to play as uh, like West um, Sussex, like uh, Alfred the Great's faction, if you complete a short kingdom victory, you become the Anglo-Saxons, and if you complete the long victory condition, which uh, you change your nation into England, so you're seeing the steps that the nation would have took to become what it did. Uh, and yeah, it's just a fun way of role playing and also kind of teaching you some history as well, which is something um, I, d I don't know about yourself, but like there's so many time periods that like uh, Total War has gone to, and and Civilization as well has helped teach me about history and make me in I I interested and, and passionate about learning about it. You play one game, and all of a sudden I've got a Wikipedia article up, and I'm there for about half an hour to an hour. You know? Yeah, yeah, no shit. It's um, it, it's, it's going to be a one for uh, you know, some of the most epic siege battles out there. Uh, some of uh, YouTubers have been putting up some battles with that as well, and yeah, it, it's just got a lot of replayability. And there's a good late game challenge when the the Normans and the Norse and all that comes. So uh, you can have some really epic battles near the end of the campaign. But like I said, there's loads of different ways to win it, and it's um, it's all about the characters and trying to like. You know, if your king gets killed straight at keep the beginning, them, you know, keep it goes them bad. alive, yeah, and don't don't get them horribly murdered, or don't let them come and horribly murder you. But yeah, that's coming your way. What uh, what's the release date? Third of May. Third of and May. And as always, you can pre-order it now. Um, but there's going to be lots of content coming out between now and release, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, I'm also doing a thing with War Child as well. So if you um, do pre-order it, so if you're thinking about getting the game already, then that will go a bit of that will go to charity as well which held a quite cool charity very cool yep so that's sons of britannia that's what we've been playing a little bit of earlier today i do have some footage i'm going to be cutting that up over the next couple of days and i'll show you what the campaign and how all of these systems work and all the how the siege battle that went horribly wrong went yeah horribly wrong. <laughs> i don't blame that i don't blame us for that i think we were completely <laughs> outnumbered there we had no chance so you know that wasn't your fault yeah, well, he was playing this time, so I don't. I know the subreddit will blame me regardless, but now that was him. <laughs> that was him. If you want to see my glorious Skaven tactics? You'll see them, but not with these guys. No, no, no. Apparently, I can't be trusted with the Saxons. Ex pro gamer <laughs> can't play his own game. Y yep. Yeah, I, I'm used to this at this point. Yeah, it's entirely <laughs> your fault. And uh, obviously, hopefully, um, uh, talking to Jesse just restarted like the uh, Total War 3K, uh, Free Kingdoms Total War. Um, 
We'll I'm ready. See more about that in the future. Yep. Uh, that we will. Epic trailer. I love that one. All right. I've been learning more about the time period, so now I understand what's happening in the trailer. Yeah, indeed. Question. Uh, okay. Uh oh. Can I just play as Lubu? Who knows? Everyone knows. <laughs> Everyone we knows. Know, we don't know anything. Lubu about is that. his own faction. He's one character, and he slays a thousand men. You, we can have a chat at some point in the near future. I think you're going to have a good time. Can I play as Guan Yu, the god of war? This is not going to be. <laughs> Lee, can I play as Liu Bei? Stop. Zhao Yun. Just Sao Sao. Sao Pi. I, I, hate, I, I already hate Sao the Sao. Sao. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah. See, I was enthusiastic Look, about the period of history. I got now all I the names. It. I got all now the names. I hate it. And it's your fault. <laughs> all right. Moving on to the news. The news, the news, the news. Of which there is not a great amount at the moment. But there, there was the one that we teased question mark indeed the, the one beginning. that we almost got into but i want to hold on to till later because i think it ties in nicely back to stuff we've been discussing the last few weeks about genres and fast follows and originality and all that kind of mm. thing and that is the incredibly fast out of nowhere release of what they're calling an extreme early access release and that seems to be reflected by the fact that it's getting hammered on steam with an extremely low score at the moment and yeah, people radical are saying there's heights. like no textures, no, it's just like not I'd good. say that's a good reason not to play it if it is missing yeah. textures and shit like that. So Boss Key had a really rough couple of years. They made a game, they toured it around places like PAX, they got feedback, people said, hey, I like it. They thought, hey, this is going in the right direction. They got feedback from the community about, hey, do you want this free to play? Or do you want this buy up front? All that kind of thing. They took that feedback. Evidently, people just like to give feedback and not actually buy the game in question. Because when Lawbreakers finally came out, it was an absolute, complete disaster. And that wasn't down to the game not working. Although it certainly could have been more finished than it was, more polished than it was. This tutorial was pretty terrible. It was down to the fact that nobody fucking played it. Right. Nobody wanted to play Lawbreakers. And Lawbreakers nice. died very fast. Like, faster than Battleborn. It was quite mind-blowing to watch. Mm. Well, Boss Key decided we're going to make something else, I guess upon seeing the writing on the wall pretty quickly with Lawbreakers, it must have been pretty quickly, they went right out and said, right, well, we're gonna, well you need to get back on and do another game. They self-funded this. So Lawbreakers, I guess, is in the hands of Nexon and was from the very start. Supposedly this is, you know, kind of self-funded. They paid for this. And a very early version of it is out at the moment. An extremely early version, would you say? Extremely early version would be a great way to describe it, yes. Great. Now, what's going on with it? Well, it's a battle royale. Uh, I think that's obvious. This is some... Uh, I don't even know who this person is. It's probably Logan Paul, knowing my luck. I'm just uh, trying to find a channel of... Uh, who do I trust? Uh, GameSpot, there we go. Well, for trailers, anyway. They've got a... It's, they've got a sort of 80s vibe to it. It is a battle royale. They're claiming that it's got game show elements to it. It has vehicles right off the bat, including BMX, because apparently that's super radical awesome. And it seems to me like they took something like Sunset Overdrive and they threw in a battle royale, even though it's, of course, the same company that made sunset overdrive but it's definitely the sunset overdrive kind of aesthetic this trailer is silly it's thoroughly <laughs> silly and has basically almost no gameplay in it whatsoever there we go we'll move it there there we go now you're riding a bmx isn't that lovely? okay yep here at radical heights you are riding your gold plated bmx going into the arcade and all that sort of thing and i mean a lot of this is immediately recognizable from the idea that it's a battle royale. However, there's a currency system in the game. There's an economy, clearly. You have to get money. I don't know. I'm going to assume you spend that on gear and shit. That would be a safe assumption, right? 
I mean, it looks like it. I mean, they've been hunting down money a lot of the time. He's got an offshore bank account. There, he's going to buy a gun there. He yeah. went up to the Top Guns and bought a gun. Indeed, it's that easy in America. <laughs> buy the Radical Heights Founders Pack for $15 if you so desire and get... Is that Warrior? I think that is actually, yeah, Ultimate Warrior and a takeoff of Rambo and stuff like that. Amazing. I'm, try I'm trying to read the description of the game just to nail down, hey, what's different in this? But this description is terrible. Uh... It says, Welcome to Radical Heights, a free extreme early access battle royale shooter. Partake in high stakes battle royale gunplay in a sunny SoCal dome. As contestants drive by on BMX bikes or stalk other contestants from the shadows and search for weapons and prizes, but also cash that you can bank, win or lose. Whether you spend that cash on the righteous combination in your personal prize room or pull it from an ATM to purchase weapons early in the next game, Building a wealth of cash is important to take down the competition in this irrelevant 80s themed action game show. So apparently cashing in game uh, cashing in money and saving money for your next uh game or whatever is a consideration of some sort. Apparently you have some sort of permanent bachelor pad, I suppose, that you can customize with shit. I think that's my impression of it. It's not exactly giving a huge amount of information, I know. It's a bar royale game. If you're dropped in, you kill each other and win. I mean, it's like it, it's just a very simple formula. You just only have to add in a few extra different things, and you might get a quite significant audience from it. Yeah, I mean, like, apparently, yeah. play them? well, loads of people play battle royale games. If Don't someone you? was aiming for battle royale blood dragon, I'd play the shit out of that. I mean, that's the art style they've gone for. Uh, it does feel yeah, like Yeah, there's it. definitely, like, synthwave stuff, like 80s, 90s-esque stuff in there. For they sure, are, right? They have, uh, supposedly, dynamic game show moments where a big wheel comes up and spins and does shit. Like, I don't think there's enough of that in Battle Royale games at the moment, because I imagine... Such goofy stuff. Yeah, well, I imagine they want to be like, oh, we want to be competitive, so we can't have that. But these elements of the game, as it were were key to stuff like Battle Royale and Hunger Games and all of these other stuff. We were talking about a couple of weeks ago. That it's like, oh, make one that's like the Running Man. You know, make a Battle Royale that's got like Running Man elements and stuff in it. Well, mm. this game kind of does have things like that. I'm a bit put off by a lot of the language used in it, like righteous cosmetics. Righteous? Fucking... Mm. I can How tell you Cassius weren't King. in America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I did not. It's most in excellent. Yeah. These Righteous. radical and it's bodacious excellent. additions. They are, they are bodacious, so I'm told. To this totally. Bitchin'. Bitchin'? Game. bitchin'? <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Tubular? I don't got the word. No. Tubular. Yeah. Totally tubular. <laughs> yes. Let's go with that. <laughs> Apparently, mm. right now it's hyper unstable. It's nowhere near ready. Uh, which, unfortunately for them, puts them in a gnarly situation because that was acceptable back when there was gnarly. no competition. Gnarly, see? Yeah, Gnarly's getting, a good I'm one, too, the yeah. So there we gnarly go. was kind of yeah. 90s. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, gnarly. I'm getting into the flow of this. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we now have two games. Bogus. You know, PUBG used to run like shit, and now, well, it doesn't. It runs better. It's still not great, but it runs better. Fortnite runs really, really well, and I would love to know if we're going to see a mass migration to something that runs poorly in that genre. I think I'm going to go with no. I don't well, think we are going to see I would be that. shocked. You know, we've been talking about who, who are these different games audiences. We were talking about the Darwin Project and how... There's real potential there for a different audience. And it's a very different game with only like 10 players and the way that the announcer mechanic works is completely different. So there's a lot of originality there. We've been talking about the idea of the mode going into different games. Maybe when COD comes around, we get a Battle Royale mode in COD. We get a Battle Royale mode in Battlefield, etc., etc. But to release something that for the most part looks quite similar to Fortnite... Let's be honest. Uh, doesn't seem to have a huge number of new things going for it. Doesn't have the building mechanics at all, of course. So we don't get that. 
you've got maybe more emphasis on vehicles and a couple of random events and this whole idea of getting cash and using it either in game or saving it to upgrade your bachelor pad or something outside of that though i don't know this seems like it could be a hard sell in its covered state but all these battle royale games are doing like so 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 weird. Seeing a game go from being a PC title to then being console title to then being on mobile, I'm just like, mm. what the hell? And and I, I I saw a big pickup as loads of people were talking about uh, the people playing Fortnite now is 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 no longer just your standard you know PC gaming audience. Oh no, loads of girls at school just playing Fortnite mm-hmm. now. Yeah, like and and loads of people freaking out about it. It's it's awesome. But it's got to the level that it it, it just uh, comes from almost left field and becomes the biggest thing overnight. If you said that when PUBG was king, you'd be like, nah, they ain't gonna go anywhere. It's just gonna be PUBG forever. Nah, it's well, free is hard to argue with, and runs on anything is hard to argue with, particularly with kids. You know, now being able to play it on mobile. Yeah, I mean, that game's a problem at my son's school. Because, you know, a bunch of people are playing it when they should be doing their work. That's. I remember you saying that. Yeah. But, like, I think I think last week, too, Jesse also said, like, that's always been a problem for teachers. Well, so there's always has, been yeah. Tamagotchis, or there's been phones, or there's been, you know, something. Yeah, I was playing Pokemon Blue. Oh, it's going to be something. It's not like there's anything about the game specifically that is dragging people in um but i i don't know like i i hope it does well i mean there's development talent at boss key it's obvious lawbreakers in my eyes was a good game it's just it didn't have a fucking audience nobody wanted to play it i i just i i'm really curious about design philosophy over there because uh, good game aside I, i'm curious if if they are coming at game creation from the perspective of can we jump into something and and I, 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 like snatch up people that are not responding to other games mm-hmm. or can we create a, a gimmick that will help sell our like i don't know what their design philosophy for these games are because they could be good fun games but like on the surface level, I don't see upon first viewing why anyone would be like, yeah, that's the game for me. Like Lawbreakers, for example, the first thing I noticed right off the gate was like, oh, that's cool that it's like has this gravity mechanic. But as a player, I saw all the other games that were out and I saw the characters that were in Lawbreakers and was like, boy, those are like 1994 Doom mod character. Like, I'm a big buff skull man. And I'm like, I, like none of them were didn't resonate modern day aesthetically cool they were like if it was in the 90s like that guy's fucking awesome but like it just there's a lot that i didn't understand about what they decided to do with that game and i don't know what the culture is over there or what they're trying to do but even this game is like yeah it's kind of goofy right get it it's goofy and, and it's set in the 80s but like goofy already exists with fortnite fortnite's already goofy yeah yeah like, so why does this need to be ways. goofy uh, i just have so many I have so many con- like questions and concerns about where they're at because they clearly have talent to make games, but I don't know that they know what people want in their games anymore. Hmm. No, I- I'm not convinced they do, which is un- very unfortunate because, like you said, there's clear talent there. Um, yeah, the game I- like for- uh, um, uh, Lawbreakers plays really well. Yeah, I just don't know anyone who wanted to play it. Yeah. It's like, oh, the movement's great, but you've got to learn how to do the movement, and nobody could be yeah. bothered to learn how to do it. So you had problems there. Mm. I don't know. It's you know, video games take time to develop. This is, you know, obviously another attempt at a fast follow. I don't know how long they've been working on this. They've obviously, you know, they must have taken something from Lawbreakers. It'll be running in the same engine. Not that that's a big surprise. Fortnite runs in the same engine. Unreal mm. Four is not uncommon. And it's not like Bosky can't use it, you know? But I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what the direction of that studio is either. I think right now they are literally just trying to make money. You know, yeah. They're, 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 they're mean, taking a shot. Yeah, they're taking a shot to just try and make money. And no, you're not special if you don't like Battle Royale. Ooh, I don't like the most popular thing right now. I'm not special. Now, that, that, that's not really impressive to anybody. It's like, okay, you don't like it, don't play it then. But don't take away from the fact that it's an extremely popular genre 
And frankly, any dev that doesn't at least think about wanting a piece of that pie, they're not thinking clearly. Right. Yeah. If they if they're in a position, if they are positioned to do it properly, to do it well and to get it off the ground quickly in a good state, they mm. should fast follow those games. Uh there's a high res was going to do a battle royale style game within Paladins and they've spun it off now to its own game, which doesn't right. surprise me in the slightest. And they'd hardly be the first people to do it. I mean, Heroes of the Storm exists because they spun Blizzard Dota off. Blizzard Dota was supposed to be a free mod for StarCraft 2. That's why I'm here today to announce Total War Battlegrounds. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'd play the shit out of that. If you hey, get get, to, get a, you know Total Warrior on the PS2, get that game, and then they'll have people pick up the weapons like from the ground and have a big fucking melee with all sorts of different soldiers from different time periods basically deadliest warrior mixed with battle royale i'll play the hell out of that i'm taking notes there you go doesn't have to be historically accurate you're allowed to get away with that but yeah i, I, don't, I don't blame any dev for wanting a piece of that pie bosky you know has got to be pretty pissed about how badly their last game went some of it's their fault i don't think all of it was by any stretch so they can give it another shot, but I think they've probably rushed way too much on this. You know, they've been, they've been abundantly clear. It's like, this is extreme early access. Why? Why are you rushing? Who are you trying right. to beat? Who are you trying to beat to market right now? Because you've already been beaten to market by massive, massive games. But how many players play those games? I mean, even if you took a tiny percentage of that uh, fan base and you would have more than enough to yes, get the game. Yes, exactly. You can take a That's little what bit going of it. For. That is exactly what they're going for. They want a little bit of someone else's fan base. But it's as both of you said, Jesse and Dodger, like, which of them are they going for? If they're going for the goofy end of things, right. Fortnite has that unlock. And there's certainly no realism and authenticity be to be had in this. So... And and to me, who, as I said, was looking for new mechanics and ideas, I don't think there's enough new mechanics and ideas in this compared to the Darwin Project for me to care about this. I, I also don't understand, and th this goes back to why it's so difficult for an MMORPG to lure people away from WoW. Like, why would you go to something that's new that has less when something that you have played and understand and know about has more... And, and the content is refined yes. more. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about there are genres where people are desperate b because there's almost no games in them. But we have two really good Battle Royale games. And yeah, okay, there's room for more. But is it going to be this one? Not in its yeah, current if you, state. If, you'd, if, if it came out in a much more polished state, maybe. Yeah, if you're coming out of the gate with like, if you're swinging coming out of the gate and you've got yeah. an amazing game, you stand a chance and you can pull people away. But you if can. you're like, we're like super awesome alpha edition and, um, you know, it's kind of like Fortnite and kind of like PUBG, then <laughs> who's going to play that? I just, I wouldn't touch who's going to play that? I'm interested to know, bearing in mind this thing is supposed to be out for free right now, how many people are currently playing it on Steam? I mean, I don't know if they've thrown out any money to streamers to push this thing. Well, it's not even in the top 10, so there's that. Uh, Radical Heights. And they probably will do that. You know, they'll throw money at streamers because it does work. Uh, I think it... Uh, actually, there's currently an internal server at Steam Chart, so I can't actually tell how many people are playing. Oops, never mind. I wonder how many people are streaming it on Twitch. That would be an interesting metric. Who is currently who is currently playing it right now? Not many. Mm. Not mm. any, by the looks of it. Um, I wonder if it's actually down at the moment. It could be, but I don't know. It okay? Cool. Let's have some more games in the genre, but let's not throw unfinished shit in the genre. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's currently top one hundred in client at the moment uh but wait there's I'm a sure. game called islands of nigh that is yes nine 
Yeah, that thing. That is doing better? Well, that's another Battle Royale game. But yeah. th th that's it, been, I've never heard of it. Never yeah, heard of it either. The only the only time I've ever heard of it is when I've seen it on Twitch streamed by somebody relatively famous. Um, I think they're giving very limited access to certain people. In this case, mm -hmm. it's like all of the people that were popular in PUBG, etc. Gotcha. Um, I don't know if they're being sponsored to play it or not. Who knows? But that's how it is. I'm fine with there being more games in the genre. I just want them to be good. And I want them to be diverse and different and have, you know, appeal to different audiences and have different interesting ideas and mechanics. And right now, no, not at the moment. I would not say that this, in its current form, seems to scratch that itch. We will see. All right. Anything else on the news front that people would like to cover, or shall we get into the releases? Nothing I can think of. Yeah. No. As you might have noticed, there's not a huge amount going on at the moment. The exception of there was a fairly large fine given out in Korea for loot boxes, or more specifically, deceptive randomized promotion for loot boxes. Nexon, the company we were talking about earlier, the publisher of Lawbreakers, got into a little bit of hot bother. They produced a game called Sudden Attack, which is very popular, if I recall correctly, in South Korea. And it had a loot box with 16 different pieces. And apparently, if users collected all 16, they would receive diverse benefits. But Nexon said the 16 pieces would be provided at random. However, that was not true. Some of them had a chance of 0.5% drop. One user had to actually spend more than $350 to get all 16 pieces. One, ha, that's cute. Two, uh, they obviously have the ability to manipulate the different percentages. Right. And another firm that got hammered was Netmarble. They had a loot box in their game called Monster Taming. And you get a rare monster in this loot box. The chances were advertised as under 1%. What they actually meant by that was 0.0005%. What? Wow. Yep. So I mean, I they... guess they didn't lie? <laughs> yeah. So while they were technically right, the Nor the Korean Fair Trade Commission, not the North Korean Fair Trade Commission, I can't imagine they have one of those, uh, fined Nexon Korea 884,000, and they fined Netmarble 42,000. Which is amusing, really, because Netmarble was by far the more egregious, I think, of the two. But there you go. Uh, so, yeah, they are now finding, pe finding companies in South Korea for what they view as deceptive loot box practices. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. <laughs> but I'm looking at them like, oh, one user had to spend more than $350 to get all 16 pieces. You ever seen a Hearthstone expansion? Yeah. Like, that's not that egregious. <laughs> Maybe they just lucked out that 0. 000000 yeah. percent worked out for them. I, I guess so. I'm glad they're doing something about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, definitely a slap on the wrist for one of them. The next on fine was fairly significant, but we'll see. Mm. I don't think they're going to stop pulling this shit because I think it's too profitable for them to not stop pulling this shit. Mm. So that was it in terms of news that I found, unless anyone else happens to have one that they want to tackle. If not, we'll head to the releases. Releases it okay. is. All right. Let's releases. We are doing releases. Well, no, we don't have many this week. That's probably for the best. All right. So we start off with something from Dodger. What you got? Uh, It's deployment. It's okay. a kind of minimal color-based top-down shooter. Um, And so far, it has very good reviews. So Unique game classes. Trying to see what the the big deal is. Ah, it's multiplayer. Okay. Mm. All right. Fair enough. All right. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Procedural level generation, game. all sorts of cool things like that. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Extinction, I believe, was the game that you were talking about, Jesse. That is out as of today. It's on console and PC. That is correct. Oh, this uh, is we talked about it earlier in the show, but it's out. And um, it plays really well. It's fun to play. Just wish they would lower the price. <laughs> God yep. bless. For some reason it's not coming up. I don't know why, but yes, $60 for that for whatever reason. Uh, Jesse, you picked up Masters of Anima by the looks of it. Yeah, uh, it appears to be a game that it combines Pikmin with fantasy monster battles. Mm -hmm. So it's like a bunch of little dudes versus giant ass monsters. Yeah, I love that. That seems cool. They so uh, so the, the people who made this uh, were the guys that made Space Run, which was a really cool. They actually made two of them, Space Run and Space Run's Galaxy or whatever, which were these two really cool kind of tower defense, build your space truck and defend your space truck against the shit that's coming at you. It's very much like playing Galaxy Trucker only in real time on a computer. Mm. And I got an email from these a couple of days ago that said, yeah, those games did really well and we decided to release our own original thing called Masters of Anima. And this looks fucking legit. I have to say, it's this cool. looks really fun. It's, uh, that Pikmin thing, uh, comparison you brought up there I think is really apt. This looks kind of great. Yeah, I saw it and was like, <gasps> what? Yeah. <laughs> it's also out on Switch and PS4, which... I think on Switch would be fun. Yeah. Well, it depends how well it runs, because that's a lot of dudes on the screen, right? And right. that's not a very big screen. Worth keeping an eye on that, though. If you haven't have a PS4, then Dodger has pointed out that Regalia has made its way over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that game... Was super fun it just had like a few levels that were um obtusely hard mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but, which uh, people have said spiked. they've they've taken the time to fix and That's so i good. assume that their ps4 release is much more balanced yeah because this game was highly entertaining they've they patched it quite a lot and mm. yeah it is good april the 11th jesse i you know what this game, I was looking through them, and something about this I'm really intrigued about. So on the surface level, I was like, oh, I guess it's kind of like an RPG Maker game. It but it has like, a little yeah. bit more polish and a little bit more going on. Basically, you are elected senator okay. of a city, and you are put in charge of discovering who assassinated your father oh. and trying to prevent a war. And I'm curious how that's done in RPG form. It's fascinating to me. Hmm. And uh, I, I, yeah, I was just like, all right, I'm in. Let's see what this is. So I, ha I had to select it. All right. Yeah, look, it, that would be my first impression as well. It's like, this is RPG Maker. But no, the more I look at it, the more it clearly is not. Um, yeah, there, it's, it's, you're not, I don't see any monster. I, I don't know. I'm like, what is this game? I have no clue, but it's fascinating. So I'm, I'm interested in, in what it could possibly be. Cool. Uh, I would like an explanation, Dodger, as to why Minesweeper is on my list. Because I've been looking for a good version of Minesweeper on Steam forever. You kidding? And this one looks like it might actually be good. What's wrong with the regular one? What? What do you what's mean? Wrong with, what's wrong with the regular version of Minesweeper? Uh, that used to come on Windows, but doesn't anymore because what? they make you use the Windows Store. Heresy. <laughs> Um, this this looks nice to me. So right, will, it's an early. I don't know why it needs to be an early access, but <laughs> yeah, I, you're recommending an early access version of Minesweeper. I think we we may have gone off the deep end here. I can't wait to see how this game develops. Yeah, sure. It's going to have Battle Royale <laughs> elements in it in a couple of weeks and monetize crate systems. Minesweeper Battle Royale. Yeah, I'll do that. You drop people. Actual players down on the map, and some of them will explode, some of them won't. That's like perfect. It. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> the Amazing Bernard. This better be a dog. I don't think um, so. This one looks like it could potentially be fun to play. The backgrounds don't, like the art style of the backgrounds don't match the art style of no, the they assets. Don't. Um, which is a little weird. So like the backgrounds, I'm like, whoa, those are beautiful. But then the actual people and the machines and stuff i'm going they seem like they're from completely different games yeah. but it still looks like there's potential there it's a little platformer game it's a runner by the looks of it 
uh, mm. where you've got to use different abilities to bypass the obstacles. But yeah, you're right. The art style's all over the fucking shop. Doesn't mean it's not going to be fun, though. That's about it on that day, I think. Wait, d Deep Ones. Where have I heard of that before? Deep Ones has come at a PS4 PlayStation Vita, I think. Deep and ones? to Nintendo Switch as well. I've heard of that for some reason. I Oh, it's on Steam. Um It's already on Steam. Yeah, it's a uh Oh, sort that of is looks not like what a Metroidvania at all. Okay. It's a retro arcade platformer that looks like it was done on ZX Spectrum and inspired by Lovecraft. Yeah, that was I was hoping for something a little bit more than that. Never mind. Oh well. Oh well. All right, moving on. That's um, about it for April 11th. April 12th. Dead in Vinland. Uh, we talked about it a few weeks back because it looked really interesting to me, but it keeps getting pushed, so I'm really hoping that it actually comes out on the 12th now because um, I've really, really wanted to play it. It is a Viking survival management game. With mm. RPG and adventure elements, which looks like potentially cool. Yeah. Yep, I'm liking the idea of that. That might be good. Jesse? Oh, it's from the same team that made Dead in Bermuda. Okay. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it, it looks like that. Dead, Dead in Bermuda was good. Yeah. That was worth a look. Double turn. Yo, this game yes. I picked for you. Indeed. It is a wrestling game. It's a wrestling brawler. The first trailer is okay. The second trailer, literally, there's ladder matches. So, like, yes, That's I saw good. this and was like, here we go. It is a. It looks really, really fun. This definitely seems like a fun party game. It's a yeah. It's a pro wrestling party brawler for up to four players. Fight in fast-paced local versus matches or challenge throws one versus one online. Simple combat, destructive signature moves, and take your opponent down to take the championship gold home blah 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 yeah well i mean you know there aren't that many wrestling games available if you want to play a really good one fire pro is the best one available right now i would say the official wwe games are a fucking mess but there are a couple of sort of arcadey games coming our way and this one looks like it could be a lot of fun actually i'll play this mm -hmm. definitely speaking of party games how long has this been in development? A long, I was long, like, is, long yeah. time. Was this just in development the whole time? Yep, it was. I mean, it looks great. So, I, like... <laughs> Compared to the original version? Yeah. Just, it is just a significant really nice improvement. Comparatively. Just note on the page for this game. It won a grand prize in 2011 and was yes. in the PAX... Uh, <laughs> Like game of Omega Thon twenty thirteen. That's yep. how long this game has been in development longer than I've been on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, Spy Party's what? been around for fucking ages. It's <laughs> how crazy. The fact that it's that's finally so coming weird. out is fantastic. I don't want to play with anyone that's already played it. Because I have a feeling it will be impossible against someone who's seasoned in this. If it's been around for like six or seven fucking years that you stand no chance against anyone who's been playing it back then. But, but you this... can uh you can set up like your own servers on this game, I would well, assume. Well, yeah, I'm going you to assume you're not forced to play friends. with people you don't want to. Um but yeah, it's it's crazy that it's finally come out and yeah. awesome because it looks really really cool. I should play it sometime this week. Find mm -hmm. someone who's bad at it so I can enjoy it. <laughs> At least for the Switch. Don't Starve Nintendo Switch Edition, according to this, is coming out April the 12th. That is a big deal. I actually was surprised that it hadn't been released yet. Well, there you go. Burly Men at Sea, also the Switch Edition of that. And uh, Rogue Aces. Why have I heard of that before? I don't know if it was ever on... Steam. No, it was not. I'm curious to know what Rogue Aces is. Because that's coming to Switch, PS4, and Vita. Yet again, a few Vita games coming out of nowhere for some reason. 
It is a 2D air combat dogfighting roguelite, uh, which normally I would turn my nose up at it, but then I looked at the art style, and it's a really nice aesthetic. Let mm. me... I'm just throwing a little YouTube video over here for you so you can... This is the wrong place to put it. Let's put it here instead, and this will work better. There we go. Switch it over there. There we go. The uh, the art style looks really quite good. There's a sort of metal slug level of detail on a lot of the stuff on the ground. And it looks pretty fun. So I'm hoping that this will be well worth a look. Mm. Okay, cool. No one else hasn't said about it. Obviously, no one else cares. I'm like, hmm. nope, I'm hmm. good. Yeah, cool. All right, that's fine. I'll share my enthusiasm with myself on that one. <laughs> All right, moving on in that case to April the 13th, and we are looking at The Road to Hades. I grabbed this for Jesse because um, the thumbnails look interesting and it's a horror game yeah it does look interesting i don't know i don't know that it's aptly described in here about this game there is no repeat playback pattern narrow indoor and outdoor areas greatly increase psychological depression what it is full of original works that did not exist before well the time be playback oh, story good. not typing or video very suitable for vr playback this I don't know what like any of that means. <laughs> poor translation of a Chinese game, I think, is most likely the case. Yeah. There's a, another thing I can add to the list of I'm not going to bother playing that. But, Jesse, will you head into Marie's room? What is that? I don't know. Uh, Where is that? Or was it Dodger that said you should It was head into me Marie's because, room. but this is another one. That was kind of also for Jesse because this game straight up looks like, hey, do you want to just like walk around Chloe's room from Life is Strange? <laughs> That's really what it looks like. Doesn't no. it? Isn't that weird? No, um, it's I it's don't. Awesome, but... The descriptor for this game literally is just like Marie's room is a short story exploration game about an unconventional friendship between two classmates. I almost oh, feel right. like this is going to be just like, we really liked going through Chloe's room when you were with Rachel. So this is yeah. a story about two girls in love. That's what it seems like on the surface. That's exactly Lovely. how it looks to me as well, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, all right. And that was all that we could point out. Except there is something missing from this list that is really quite astonishing that we didn't spot the first time, and that is Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Uh, that April comes out the 16th. Yeah. The 16th is a Monday, not a Tuesday. So that's actually um... out this week. And I was, I had no idea Yakuza 6 was coming out this early. But according to this, it is, which is why I'm suspicious of it. And I'm currently looking it up just to make sure that our release list is not wrong. Yakuza 6's release. No, that was the initial release. We need the English release. When are we getting it? Let's I finally started playing Yakuza 0. Oh yeah, I played Yakuza 0 this week. <laughs> yeah, my, that would have been a good thing to mention three hours ago. Uh, Forgot about that. I'll play more of it and then we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> Wikipedia disagrees saying it's the 17th, although it could still be on the midnight. One way or the other, yes, worldwide release of Yakuza 6 is either the 16th or the 17th. So it is, it's this week. Which is a big deal. Because this is the first modern Yakuza game we've had translated into English in a long time. Bear in mind, Yakuza 0 is a translation of the PS2 game. As I believe is Yakuza Kiwami as well. Mm. So this is a up-to-date like PS4 level Yakuza game. So that's a pretty big deal. I think that is about it, from what I can mm -hmm. tell. Yep, Giant Bomb says the 17th. They may be right, so may ours. One way or the other, midnight is probably the time you'll be able to get it. Cool. 
those are the releases this week. Not too many, as you probably noticed. Ah. <sighs> We should probably play some video games before next week. That sounds like a good idea. Now that PAX is over, now that we have few, few excuses, not zero Now that excuses, that convention but... about playing video games is over, let's go play video games. Indeed. Yeah, sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Dog, but thank you very much for coming on the show today. Much appreciated. And, of course, have a safe flight. Thank you, you very are much. headed over in the direction of a certain person that we are, are quite familiar with on this yeah. show. Yeah, see Joe. He'll be yeah. good. Going, Going to, to see Angry barbecue. Joe. barbecue. Yes, you you will get to go and get some barbecue. That's that's good. I'm gonna let people know he ain't even that angry. No, he's not. He's it's actually all quite lie. chill. It's he's all lie. I've seen him chill. Sometimes. He's a little yeah. sweetheart. He's very he's very chill. No doubt about that. Jesse, what's going on this week for you? What's going on? Oh man, um, back at it. Finally got back my computer. <laughs> Usually good to have that. <laughs> it died. So uh, today we're trying to fix some stuff and make sure it's all set and good to go. But more stuff to come and um. Yeah, uh, there's going to be more of Crendor and I uh, dicking around in pit people. And um, yeah, just stupid stuff. If, if you ever wondered what people, if you ever thought to yourself, watching Jesse and TB play pit people was insane. Imagine replacing TB with someone who is awful. Just I Yeah, that awful. sounds like something I would not want to be involved in. You'd lose your mind. I but... Would. But you learn a lot about um, uh, Rocket Pops. Life. <laughs> That's my pitch to you. If you want to know more about Rocket no. Pops and that the map from Dora has a sun, tune in. Dude, I swear to no, God. This tune is in. Just, you learn this some is shit. Just you doing we teach the Cox and Crendor this just podcast. sounds like Cox and Crendor in the morning. That's all it is. That's all it is. Let's be but. honest. You can watch stuff happen on the screen. That's, that's also, all Dora the Explorer, the happening. map has a sun? God damn it. Dodger, what are you doing this week? Please be more interesting uh, than this. It won't be. It's okay. the normal shit. I'm right. uh, streaming and uh, putting stupid shit on my social media. And That's true. Yeah. And um, I had a bunch of videos that were privated by a third party that I will not mention uh, for, for no reason. And those are finally unprivated. So that's Good. really exciting. There you go. But um, yeah, just... Just the normal, the normal stuff. We have Manga Pod tonight reading Made in Abyss, if that's an anime that you guys are super into. And uh, yeah, that's me at cool. Dex Bonus on everything. Yep. Myself, I'll be working on that Thrones of Britannia video, most likely, and seeing what else I can get cracking on with this week, entirely dependent on how well my back survives. So far, it's been doing all right, this show. We're doing okay. As I don't know if you heard in the background, hopefully you didn't, but... Oh, maybe you heard, heard that. Can you hear that? Please tell nope. me. Nope. No. That's amazing. I might be able to stream then, because that is a large vibrating pad that is on my back um, and making me feel a hell of a lot better. It's actually making me feel quite sleepy. So I'm not <laughs> sure if I'll be able to really do a stream with that on it, but it's a heated massage pad, and it's really quite good. So I'm going to go and maybe fall asleep in my chair, and the rest of you can go away. It's all the same time next week. Thank you very much for watching the show folks i believe and i'm gonna double check that i got it right this time because i screwed it up last time by announcing him too early i think dj wheat will be our guest uh, next week yes he is, he is locked in for april 17th ladies and gents so we'll be joined by the wheats the silver fox himself thank you very much for watching the corruption podcast ladies and gentlemen we will see you next week thank you and goodbye Mwah. bye, -bye. bye. bye.